up new master doing a final check of all the scenes and settings trying to make sure I have all the tools and stuff ready to go and I think we're good hello hopefully the settings are looking good for you guys again I've been playing with a lot of the settings uh, let me know if the audio is sounding nice and clear to you guys if the music is audible but not too overpowering uh, that's one thing I've been trying to figure out is a good audio level so that you guys can hear the music and it's you know providing some background ambiance but it's not too overpowering for those trying to watch the video for uh, you know kind of a uh, walking through and, and keeping up what's up Alex thank you guys for hopping in the chat thanks to everybody who hopped in early and we're talking Jeff mentioned that he just uh, just helped a buddy finish his V0.2 with disco side panels. So I do have a set of those. I actually have several sets. So I could technically put some in this build. I'm gonna try to, as I normally do, go kind of stock at first. But I did pick up some sets of the disco side panels. Um, so we can put them in. I think I'm probably going to put them in the Formbot build first. Like maybe once I have this one going and it's, uh, you know, working well and I can rely on it pretty well, then I can start doing some more extreme stuff with the Formbot kit. We'll see. I've also been talking with someone about getting some custom custom laser uh, extra just some custom side panels for the LDO kit but I need to also stick this guy in and record one thing I've been trying to figure out is a good way to be able to record some of the different angles as like raw footage such that we're able to kind of utilize that footage when we need to later on uh, for kind of the review but let me know how the audio sounds to you guys. I can see it looks good. I'm dropping no frames so far. Got a good internet connection. Apparently that was one of the issues I ran into the last time. Was that uh, I just had a bad connection to YouTube. So I kind of had to like disconnect everything, turn off my router, turn it back on and that helped a bit. But hopefully we're doing okay in that regard. So let me bring up my itinerary for the stream. I got some retweets. Thank you guys. So last stream we went over uh, some matter hacker filaments. The audio feels a bit loud relative to your voice. Maybe drop it by 5%. I just dropped it and there's a little bit of a delay. So let me know if you notice a drop and then we'll keep tweaking it down. But last time uh, I went over some of the Matter Hacker filaments they sent. There's some really cool quantum PLAs that I'm really excited to try out. They have their build series PLA and ABS. They also have uh, build series refills, which I'm really excited about. I mentioned that, you know, when I was printing all that PPA uh, or PPE during the uh, pandemic, I had so many empty spools. So I'm glad that uh, filament manufacturers are starting to use both cardboard spools which can have a little bit of trouble in like the AMS systems but also using refills so that you can just kind of keep your your main spool and pop on the refills so really happy about that thanks again to Matter Hackers for providing the kit again this is not sponsored in any way they just wanted to let you guys know that the kits are available on their site you can go and uh, view them they've got the V0.2 R1 kit which is a little bit newer than what I have mainly the main, only main change I know of besides some revisions LDL might have done is the filament runout sensor. And then they also have a V0.2, no, sorry, V2.4 kit, and then also the Trident kit. And I believe those are both the newest revisions of uh, the LDL kit. So let's see, what else do we want to talk about? Uh, after that last stream, we also did some bench testing of our electronics. So we made sure that our SKR Pico was able to power on and it looks good. We didn't flash it or anything, but technically you can flash the SKR Pico before you get the whole build together. 
Um, you can also get your Raspberry Pi up and flashed and working before you get it in the printer. I know a lot of people have trouble once it's in the printer, they don't know how to, you know, get it connected to their Wi-Fi. And when it's kind of not in your printer, it's easy to just take it over to your router and plug it in. So we also tested out all of our fans with our kind of benchtop power supply and made sure that those work. So highly recommend you test out your electronics before you get to the end of the build or to the print head and you put them, uh, put them in and turn them on and then they just don't work. And then you have to spend two weeks possibly waiting for an RMA. I'm pretty sure LDO and Matter Hackers, if you buy from them, will take care of you and get you the stuff that you need. But ideally, you know, you just don't have to deal with that. Uh, what else? We started to work on the frame a little bit. We got our linear rails cleaned up and greased. And then we started on the frame and I ran into a little bit of trouble with the nut bars. Um, from what I've talked to with people, you have to be really, really gentle with these nut bars. They are a nice convenience, I'd say. in terms of you can just slide them in and then you don't have to use like nut carriers with a whole bunch of m2 nuts but you do have to make sure that the you don't strip them out so they are a convenience but you have to be a little bit careful with them so since i did end up stripping this one out you can see i put a little black marker on it to, to note that i don't want to use this one i stripped out two holes and the solution that i found is you can either buy some m2 nuts and print these carriers carriers out just in case or you can buy an extra set of nut bars i happen to have these because when i was doing the formbot build i bought a whole extra hardware kit from i think west 3d so this is a whole v0 hardware kit from ldo so i happen to have an extra set of nut bars but yeah that's just something to note that you need to be careful. Um, so I've got an extra five of these, hopefully between these and the ones I still have, we won't strip any more out and we can get the whole printer built without having to resort to going back to using uh, the, the uh, what do you call them? The, the nuts. So we're going to proceed with the build. How are you guys doing in chat? Jeff already mentioned he's uh, been building a V0 with a friend. What are you guys working on? Let me know. Let's switch over to desktop and figure out where we are. So we basically barely got started into the build. Last time we busted out our E extrusions. You can tell these because they have their holes kind of offset a little bit. So these are our e extrusions. They're meant to be for the um, for the Y rails. So they will be kind of up high going back and forth. I think they show that here. Yeah, you can see right there. They're for the kind of top. But yeah, we got the screws in off stream. I went ahead and got the um, one of the new nut bars and put it in there and was able to get it tightened down. So now we have both of these extrusions set up and ready to go. So that's the end of this step. Preventing mishaps, you want to make sure that you don't accidentally slip the rails off. I did go ahead and remeasure these to make sure that they're at 38 millimeters. Yeah, I wish they did the nut bars for the micron. That would be kind of cool. Maybe ping Jason from LDO and say, hey, you guys need to do this for like as many of your, your printers as possible. What's up? You want skiing? Hey, we're starting on the LDO V0 kits build, and um, you can go back and watch the archives. I did have a trouble with some of the settings and the stream being a little jittery in the first two streams, but the first stream was a, the unboxing. The second stream was doing some prep, getting the rails uh, cleaned and lubed, doing some bench testing, and now we're actually getting into the build. So welcome to the stream. Good to see you, Caleb. Uh, but yeah, these are at 38 millimeters exactly. Uh, you can always use a pair of calipers to kind of space these out uh, if you want to. Oops. So we're at 38.2. A little long. This one. Is that 38 exactly? 0.2 millimeters. Not sure that's a huge problem. But uh, yeah, those extrusions are ready to go. What do the instructions say next? 
we need to put our rail in stops on. I need to get those printed pieces. I wasn't prepared as I thought I was. For these, I've got them printed out in a few different colors actually. And I think I'm gonna go with green for most pieces, honestly, on this, since the frame is so black. And I kinda wanna get a little bit of that Master Chief feel. Um, we can always switch them out a little bit down the road. I guess we need both of them. We need our M3 by eight. And we need some nut carriers. So I have a whole bunch of the no drop nuts printed out and most of them are pre-filled. What's up Brenovic? Um, then I have a whole bunch that are unfilled. I'm just gonna kind of keep printing them out as I need them. If you run low, I'll have some extra. Then we've got our M3 by eight. And so we can insert these guys. So the no drop nuts are pretty simple to use. You just slide them in where you need them. Um, you want to be careful. There's a couple spots where if you use the no drop nuts, then your spacing won't be correct. Namely on the, the doors. Once we get to those, the little magnetic door holders, if you use the regular nuts, then the spacing won't be right. Uh, the no, no drop nuts. So that's something to be aware of, but let's see. It's the best angle for this. I can zoom in, but the quality is not that great. I don't know. What do you guys think? or we can go over to this camera angle. Let's try this. The only problem is that this camera is set up on the table and the table wobbles a little bit. Let's see what Alex said. Um, I don't mind filing the nut rail with nuts for the Formbot kit. It could be so much worse. Oh, filling the rail, yeah. Yeah, honestly, on the Formbot kit, it, it wasn't too much of a problem. Um, you know, it might save you five to 10 minutes. It's just a small convenience thing in a way that LDO is trying to kind of set their part, uh, kit apart a little bit. So the no drop nuts are considered optional for this. So technically you don't really need them because you're immediately kind of putting the screw on. So we could just use the regular guys on this. Let me know if that camera kind of bouncing around and floating is a little disorienting at all kind of annoying me i might have to turn on image stabilization so another option would just be to kind of stick this through the nut on don't drop the nut that's like the name of the game don't drop the screw don't drop the nut for me at least Reverse it, get it started, slide it on there, and they go on the short side, making sure. For those of you who have built a V0 part, what was the most finicky part for you? I always describe the V0 as a little bit of a finicky build from what I've seen compared to other parts, meaning it's not a complex motion system, it's not very hard to, to do, but it, it's got some like frustrating parts. Hey, happy manufacturing, welcome. Thanks for hopping in the stream. Yeah, it's been a little while, been a little bit of a delay. I've been trying to get the setup a little bit better. I've changed where the cameras are. I've kind of um, tried to optimize things, got better audio. side cams it's probably not useful to have that cam doubled up so let's go with it. overhead in this moment this camera likes to kind of creep around a little bit i can't keep it where i want it but uh thanks for hopping in manufacturer happy so those two guys are on we can then tighten them up I'm gonna to try to use these RC style screwdrivers as much as possible, as opposed to ball heads, because with the ball heads, that's where I had the most trouble. So rail stops on, then we can move to the next step. And we're gonna bust out the C extrusions. 
which I already have up here. So let's move these guys up. The extrusions have blind holes on both sides there. And then on the flip side, they have nothing. I don't know if you guys can see that. I do want to call out the quality of these rails. I mean, they're just black ones. They're not like the ni really, really nice colored ones that LDO provides, but even their black extrusions, sorry, are really, really nice. They've got kind of like a little bit of a shimmer to them as I almost dropped them. Let me make sure streamer mode is on for Discord so you guys don't hear any doo dupes. Reloading nuts, Jeff. Yeah, that's probably the most finicky part. I mean, the, the manual is pretty good. So I don't think most people should run into any problems where they miss something. But yeah, it's it's kind of the, I don't want to say worse, but like most frustrating maybe part of the, the kit. Yeah, Elio doesn't play around, super nice anodizing. Um, this scene is a little bit dark. Let me see if I can turn on one of my lights. Brighten it up a little bit. That might help. Okay, so we've got our C extrusions out. These are gonna be the vertical extrusions for the D rails. Um, so let's try our new nut bars and see if we have any better luck with them not stripping out. I say new, I don't know if they were actually manufactured more recently than this kit, but. Uh, we're gonna slide those in. We need to make sure we leave room for the blind holes. And we are going to lay our rail. So I did make sure that I put the kind of nicer, smoother feeling rails on our Y extrusions, just because that's a little bit more of an important motion system than the Z. The Z, you know, it's only really moving when you're homing and then moving 0.2 millimeters at a time, most likely while you're printing. So it's not crucial that those be absolutely kind of smooth this motion. We're going to use our rail guides to hold these down. Get everything aligned. And let's see if we can manage not to strip these guys. We need M2 by button head is what LDO says to you. One thing to keep in mind is that there is kind of a companion set of documentation from LDO. So their build notes has a lot of supplemental information. So you just want to kind of make sure you're checking in on this to make sure you do everything that they mention. Um, So what page are we on? You're on page 25. So if we go back to the build notes. Okay, we don't have to worry about anything until page 36-ish. And that's where we skip and do the, the whole Kirigami bed. So should be good to just follow the instructions for now. Uh, I'm very interested to see how much faster this process goes now that I'm much more well-versed. Plus, LDO does include some very nice small things like uh, the pre-applied thread locker on certain things. So what I'm gonna try to do is just like, really just barely finger tighten stuff, if that makes sense, um, with these nut bars. With this many number of screws, hopefully, you really don't need to torque everything down as much as you might expect, so that's the goal. And I was, I think I was mentioning, I'm gonna try to use the RC style 
drivers for pretty much everything that has to do with the rails and the frame because that's when I was using ball end drivers or, or regular bits, that's where I had the most problems with stripping the on the Formbot kit, or excuse me, uh, stripping screw heads. And it is worth noting that even in the LDO build uh, documentation, they do call out that you want to not use ball end drivers because even their hardware is at risk of stripping out with them, so. I'm not sure it's 100% a hardware quality thing. Obviously, nicer quality hardware isn't going to strip out as easy, but I think it can be an issue with any of these, especially smaller screws, M2, M3. All right, those are semi-tightened down. This guy. Come on, get in line, sir. There we go. I think I mentioned it in a previous screen, stream, but I do have a ender wire conversion that I'm working on or kind of planning out, specking out, getting ready. I bought basically a box of scraps that was a ender V2. It's either ender V2 or pro. I specifically went for one of those because I knew that they were the most compatible with the ender wire mod, but all else, the same, um, nothing else changes or nobody wants to send any kits or anything like that. We will be building that next. That's the plan. So when I was planning out like the new camera angles, I was trying to find something that I can actually bend over the build a little bit and see what I'm doing and not block the cameras. So that's a concern and hopefully this is a little bit better. I'm on top chat. Let me make sure I change this, this live chat. I don't miss anything. Yeah, let me know about that shaky camera. Is it too disorienting or frustrating? I might need to buy a completely separate camera mount stand that is not connected to the desk. I'm at a kind of a sit stand electronic desk and it's stable enough, like I can do stuff on it, but it does get a little bit of micro shaping. Nice build you're doing here. Just started yours tonight, nice. Are you building along with me? That would be kind of an interesting thing to have somebody actually building along with me. That could be fun if a whole bunch of people just were building Vorons and they all turned on their cameras and went into like the Voron Discord and were kind of walking through stuff step by step together. I missed a screw. You guys gotta keep me on my toes and not let me uh, make any mistakes. So Ivan, is this your first Voron? I only ask because it's it seems like a lot of people look to the V0 as their kind of first toe dipping into the, the Voron space, I think because it's kind of the easiest to swallow in terms of price. All right, so we have the rails installed. We need to get the correct spacing. So I mentioned this last time, but Adam from Vector3D has these guys, which are little printed spacers. So if you have a fairly accurate printer, these are probably gonna be within like two to four, 0.2 to 0.4 millimeters, correct? So you can use these to 
space things out, it looks like from the top, you want stuff to be 33 millimeters. Loosen up this guy. We need to put the rail guides back on. I'm trying to be very gingerly with these so we don't strip out any net bars. So with these, especially if you don't have like locking calipers, you can kind of use them and just press them up against them. You need to your rail guides. Uh, I didn't get my printed parts yet, but started preparing one of your rails like you're doing. Gotcha. Where did you order your printed parts from? Um, my first V0 kit was the Formbot kit, and I got them from Fabrico, which is a, a commercial PIF. And I was fairly happy with them, so I can recommend that. But where did you get yours? PIF or somewhere else? So that's 33 millimeters. We're going to tighten down from in to out, as Steve Builds always recommends. Oops. You can tell how ginger I'm trying to, like how delicate I'm trying to be with these, like dropping the screwdriver. Don't want it, the uh, rail to slip off. Kind of going inside to outside and swapping sides whenever possible. So this is the 33 millimeter one. Let's take our calipers and see how accurate this print was. Pretty right on the money, 33.0. You guys can see that in one of the cameras. Let's do the same with this guy. I left these a little bit looser, so a little bit easier. Rail guides. You just gotta make sure you don't accidentally use the uh, the wrong guide on the wrong extrusion. I don't know if you guys can tell how kind of delicate I'm being with these. I'm just using my fingertips to torque them down and not really cranking on them whatsoever. It is possible that LDO have changed their the nut bars. Um, this kit was sent to me last year, which <laughs> wasn't that long ago, honestly. But um, you know, they do have multiple revisions of their kit, so. I don't think I'm the only person who noticed their nut bars have some uh, stripping issues, but definitely not something I've heard everyone mention. Let's check the measurement on this one, 33, 32.9. Pretty close, what do you think? Uh, tweak it by 0.1 millimeter? I think we're probably pretty good being 0.1 millimeter off. You guys can be exacting as you prefer. So that's our top, the side with more space. We need to put another set of our rail stops on there. Again, I'm going to go with the green for now. How is the stream quality, would you guys say? Um, I've really been trying to like dial that in and get it as good as possible. So let me know what you guys think.
load our M3x8 button heads, spin on a, a nut. For me, if I don't really need the no drop nut, like it's not a preloaded nut that, or something that needs like particular spacing, I'm probably gonna just use regular hex nuts without the carrier, so to speak. Bought the LDO V0 or V2.0 or V0.2 R1 and went from the PIF program for the printer parts. Gotcha. Yeah, that's probably the, the best way to get some quality parts, I would I would guess. Currently building or uh, currently upgrading my V0.2, working on 120 watt bed, stick LEDs in the LDO Pico Bilico. Nice. What was your base kit? Did you start with an older LDO kit or did you start with um, self-sourced or some other kit manufacturer. 120 watt, watt bed would be nice. The Formbot kit, one thing I've noticed is that the heat up time is pretty slow. So, you know, especially if you need to heat soak your chamber because you're printing a particularly big part, it's fairly slow going. So the top, need a rail stop. On each side. We'll tighten those down for now. I imagine I'll be untightening these when we do our first kind of Z calibration on the bed once the printer's moving. Because I've noticed a lot of people, and I actually had this problem since the V0 print, uh, homes Z to the max, it will go down, hit the end stop right here. And then it doesn't know where 120 millimeters is. It just travels up 120 millimeters. And sometimes before you get to 120 millimeters, maybe at 119.5, it'll hit this rail stop and just go and kind of skip some steps. So it thinks it's at 120, but it's really at 199.5. Then you start printing and you get some weird kind of artifacts happening. And your first layers can be super compressed and then eventually it gets starts looking nice. So. One trick I, I learned was to just loosen these rail stops when I was homing. And it kind of, when I homed, it kind of barely pushed these up, like maybe a half a millimeter. And then I retightened them down and then my first layers got drastically improved. So that's something we'll look to do. I'll try to show that off when we get to that point. 33 millimeters rail positioning, no stoppers at this end yet. Next step. All right, first preloaded nuts. So we've got our Y extrusions. I might have to flip this extrusion around. The LDO is not gonna be facing up. What do you guys think? Would you do it? Would you take the time to flip this extrusion so that when they're facing each other, both the LDO texts are facing the correct way, even though you'll never see it? Let me know. I'm gonna, I wanna start a poll. How important is that? To other builders because I'll know. Uh, form bot, same age as yours. Coincidentally, I finished mine around a time. You finish your kit, heat soak was an issue with the 60 watt bed. Yeah, it takes forever for the bed to heat up, I think. I have it in my review. I don't remember. It was like three minutes to get to 105 degrees. And then if you need the chamber to actually get up to like 40, 45 degrees, it takes quite a while. So having a much higher wattage bed will be a really nice thing to have. Not important. Okay, Alex says not important. As Steve would say, this is the way. So you would do it. Before we install these, I'll, I'll make a final decision. Chat, try to remind me if you can. All right, so let's put our Rubber stops back on these guys, just to make sure. I haven't lost any ball bearings yet. Clear some space, because we're gonna, we're gonna start getting into actually building frame parts in a little bit. These screws can go away. These guys go up here. Clear our workspace a little bit. So Alex says it's not important. Jeff says he would do it. If Steve was here, I'm pretty sure he would do it. We'll see. It might come down to my level of frustration. 
All right, so we need our B extrusions. Next, I have those set out already. B extrusions have no blind holes in them whatsoever. They're the same as the H extrusions? No, they're the same as something else. I think A and B are pretty much the same, is what it is. So, uh, we need two preload two M3 nuts on the bottom extrusion. So here's where the no drop nuts come in handy. If you didn't have these, these hex nuts would just kind of freely move about in the rail. And if you tip, or the extrusion, if you tip things back and forth, they can come flying out and fly across your floor. So these no drop nuts kind of keep them in place especially when you need them to be in a, a particularly precise space, then uh, they're really, really handy. So like in, in, in the future when we're putting together the frame and mounting the motors, you need them to be spaced out correctly and it can be a little finicky to do it without. Uh, I've got something in my eye. Uh, preload two nuts, then we need one, two, three, four of the M3 by sixes. I like having ModBots Organizer, so I can just kind of reach in and get the parts I need. I don't have my hex tray out. Where's my hex tray? Steve would be ashamed. I cleaned it out, I thought, and then I moved it somewhere to have it. I feel like I'm in Blue's Clues. Where's the hex tray, guys? Do you see it? I might have to print one in these colors too. I am not sure what I did with the hex tray. I will get the hex tray sorted. I feel like I can't build one without, can't build a Voron without a hex tray, being a Steve Builds fan. Viewer fan, I'm not sure what to say. Yeah, that camera moves around and shakes around a whole lot. Good build sitting down, I suppose. How is this camera angle though? Does it provide, it might not be wide enough for some stuff later on, but hopefully it provides a decent angle. You guys can see what's going on. Hopefully my head doesn't get in the way a whole bunch. That one doesn't have a nut in it. What are you doing in there? Looks fine to you. Sweet, thanks. Welcome, Martin. So another thing I was considering is whether or not to do Steve's method of using washers for the blind joints. You guys know what I mean for that? Short to ground, hello. Hopefully I won't be shorting anything to ground during this build, but. Uh, hi, I finished my V0 today. It took me one week to build. How many days and hours would you guess? I've already done two streams at about two hours each, I think. One was just an unboxing, so we won't count that really towards build time. And the other one was just doing some prep. But yeah, the finickiness of this build can kind of make it take longer than I think a lot of people would expect. So what I mean is um, Steve builds, when he does blind joints, we need a different screw for this. We need M3 by 10 button heads. He will often put a washer. So I have an extra pack of the LDO washers.
no question mark samuel what was that in regards to i've got a little bit of a delay two three four so don't worry i'm not wasting my 0.5 millimeter washers unnecessarily i have an extra bag of them essentially but what steve builds will do is for the blind joints where he has to have a screw in the end of the extrusion he will put a washer on it so that if you've ever kind of tightened down some of these blind joints when you tighten them down sometimes it can cause the extrusions to actually kind of twist on themselves and you have to hold them down to your building surface really really well and square them up really well but if you have a washer kind of like this it can um, help that twisting not happen so I figured we'd try it out. I've got a whole bunch of extra M3 washers here. But that we'll see how that works out. It might be a top tip from Steve. Got a lot of tips from Steve. If you guys haven't watched his streams and builds, they're very, very useful. And I don't think I would have gotten through my Formbot kit without having watched his. Well, I won't say that. I would have gotten through it, but it would have been much more difficult. Um, my Formbot V0.2 arrives Thursday. Rip your weekend. Yes. But, I mean, it'll be a fun weekend. Uh, if you haven't considered it, maybe consider doing a build log. You can post it on the v, uh, Voron forums, which a lot of people don't even know that that's a thing. But there is a Voron forum. Um, so they've got some announcements and it's a little bit like some people don't really like Discord in terms of how it can be hard to keep track of what's going on and stuff like that. So this is a little bit more of a steady place. You know, there's general forum bot chat announcement build log. So I did my forum bot. I have a build log in there but you can follow other people's build logs. Um, somebody else is doing their first build, a V0.2S1 kit. And you know, if, even if you don't, aren't really great at video production or anything, you can just take pictures and make notes and ask questions and other people who are interested in that kit or have built it will likely chime in, you know, pop in and talk with you. Blind joint, good info. About 40 hours without counting the printing, had to do a lot of cleanup on ABS parts, yeah. So, you know, the starting with PIF, some people really like that because the parts are already pretty high quality. If Steve does it, it must be right. I really enjoy his builds. Yep, I agree, Martin. So we need one more of these. Up back. This guy? If you guys can't tell, I really like camera gear and video production, so I'm trying to add a little bit of niceness to the stream. I have some drop frames, so let me know if you guys experience any any issues. Let me see if YouTube said anything. Stream health. They want me to lower my bit rate, but that's gonna make the stream less quality. Steve is quite cool. So yeah, he likes to put just these little nuts on them so that when you slide the other extrusion over top of them, when you tighten that extrusion down, it won't, like this provides a little bit of relief from it kind of twisting and causing the extrusions to torque. I don't know if that's the best term, but. Okay, so if we look back for instructions, this is the first kind of spot where we've got our preloaded nuts, where we're preparing our blind joints, so I wanna make sure we get it right. We've got M3 by 10s, M3 by 6s, we've got two preloaded M3 nuts in the bottom rail, and that's all we need for this particular step, I believe. Next step. All right, here we're gonna actually start to hook things up. I don't think it's super important that we kind of make sure things are 
super straight or anything, but we need our rails here. So the rail stops are up top. Just slip that on. Put that guy on. Let me go back a step and make sure. Yeah, the bottom has the preloaded nut. I don't want to lose track of that. I think next step is going to be getting this guy attached. Read the next four pages before continuing to keep the assembly images consistent and easy to follow. And as easy to follow as possible, we are showing them an upright orientation. For easy assembly, we confirm. We recommend assembling that, yeah, laying flat. So we've got our blind holes there. And they provide access to uh, tightening the blind hole screws. I guess I didn't follow my tip and I didn't put the, um, the washers on this guy. They will be a little bit harder since they're shorter, but we're going to try to do it everywhere. Happy said, love my V0s, they're my workhorses, never let me down. Yeah, I threw four different parts, like kind of completely random parts at my V0 today. I saw something, said, hey, let me try that out real quick. Didn't even preheat the chamber since it was a very small part and just sent it. During lunch, I came down and removed that and kind of that happened like three times throughout the day which is one reason I love V0 for like rapid prototyping. A lot of people kind of ask the question like, who would want such a small printer? Who wants smaller printer? Um, but if you're, you know, most of the parts you print probably, well, I won't say most, but many kind of day to day, especially if you're doing practical prints, a lot of stuff will fit on the, the V0. I think it was Mandic really who did a a poll to just get people to tell him, hey, what are you printing today? And a lot of people sent stuff in and then he went to all the links and he noted how many would fit on a V0 and how many wouldn't and what would require stuff like, um, how do you say, splitting either in the slicer and CAD and a surprisingly high amount of the prints were able to be printed on the V0. Of course, if you're printing a lot of a certain thing and want like a big plate full of parts, then other prints might be more useful. Am I missing somebody's message in chat? Overcasters should get you there. Overcasters? What's that referring to? Oh, Pat K sent the message, okay. Yeah, I've got a slight delay on the stream in order to be able to print for, and uh, stream in 1440. Any recommended mandatory mods? I've already printed the Dragon Burner parts. Eventually you want to do mini fridge, door, and cam bus. Um, Nevermore is nice. You can either do one of the actual Nevermores or the MF Nano from uh, Maple Leaf Makers. That's just nice to get some of the ABS smell out of the air, try to prevent some of the volatile organic compounds from getting around, especially if you're gonna have the printer kind of out and about, even though it's enclosed, as soon as you open the door, like all of that's gonna come out. So um, that's definitely something. Uh, if you have the LDO kit, you might not need a clipper expander in order to do a, a uh, extra fan in there because the Pico Bilical gives you a couple of your, your um, fan ports back but clipper expander if you don't have any um uh do the lights from maple leaf makers and his filter is pretty legit too yep no problem i can't remember what he calls the light sticks for the v0 so timid made the the match sticks 
I believe. They're in the V0 hardware repo and you can buy them from DFH, West 3D, Fabrico, pretty much anybody who sells like Voron parts sells those. There's the daylight ones and then there's rainbow. I did rainbow on mine and I love them. Um, you know, they can give you some print status information and a whole bunch of stuff. So since we put these washers on there, we wanna make sure that they're inside of the, the slot. And these washers might not fit. Nope, they do fit. I don't know if you guys could see that at all. Might be too dark. You see that washer, how it's going up in the slot between the screw head and the actual channel? With this particular set of extrusions, it's kind of hard to get it set up correctly. With other ones, it's a lot easier. But I know that Steve did it a lot on his larger builds where the, with the larger extrusions, where the frame is probably harder to get square. But I did notice that the extrusions like, like to kind of contort on me when I did my last build. That's it, the matchstick diffuser. Yeah, um, uh, Maple Leaf Makers, they have some absolutely great stuff. Is it, is it Andre? So maybe I can get it with my finger, hold it in place. Nope, that didn't work. So let's tighten these two down a little bit just to kind of have them not flopping around. This won't be the final tightening. But that's how the blind holes work in general. As opposed to using square brackets, you have the pre-drilled holes in the sides of the extrusions that give you a little access hole. And that's kind of a cornerstone of Verizon's, Verizon's, Boron's um, design principles for their frames. They use the blind joints in order to get square frames without a ton of hardware. Like if you imagine if every single 90 degree joint on this printer used a corner bracket, like that'd take a whole lot more time and probably be a lot more frustrating to build. So for this part, I'm gonna flip it up. And get those into their holes. Again, these don't need to be like super square or anything right now. We're actually going to be um, using some extrusions to build out the frame. But I think this is all correct. We've got our two M3 nuts down there. This is what I mean by like all the, the nut checks and call outs in the, the manual. They give you pretty constant reminders about where nuts are required. So as long as you're kind of paying a fair amount of attention. So like, look at look for these nut checks. On the back side, before we put this on, we were supposed to have preloaded some nuts. So I got ahead of myself. RTFM. We need three on both sides. And if you're using a Bowden, then you need two additional for a total of five, but we are not using a Bowden. Um, Steve just built a a printer or a V0, or he upgraded a V0 where he did a, gosh, a Galileo 2, was it? I forget what the um, standalone version of that extruder is called. Um, but that was pretty cool just to see somebody doing a Bowden build. Was that the one he also did? Uh, prep firmware on? I can't recall. RTFM, that's an old technician joke, yeah. There's people who don't like reading manuals for kind of basic stuff like furniture, and I can kind of understand that, but when you're doing something like a very complicated printer, it kind of pays to read the manual. Uh, three nuts, not two, Brian. All 
RTFM. So what would happen if you failed to preload some nuts? Um, A, you could disassemble your frame until the point where you needed to put them in and put them in. B, you could use the LDO slide in nuts, which are these guys. They're kind of square M3 nuts, which have been ground down to have a little bit of a trapezoid shape. And you can slide these into the um, extrusion post build. So those are handy to have. Cool thing that LDO provides. They work on LDO extrusions. They don't work all that well in other people's extrusions just because the, the profile of the LDO extrusion is slightly different. So uh, the third option is people will drill an access hole into the extrusion that's wider than the size of the nut so you can get the nut in there and then just move it out. So um, there's a few things you can do if you forget a nut, but it's uh, ideal that you don't. Yes, uh, yeah, he did rep wrap firmware on that rep wrap firmware. Or a new car, I mean, the business, you would be amazed. I'm one of the people who enjoys reading manuals, I'd say. I'm not sure I'd say enjoys, but I read the manual for everything. Like, I don't know, I just kind of am fascinated by technical writing and how they come up with like diagrams and stuff for manuals. I'm weird. But I was always the kid in the neighborhood that all the old people would get to set their um, the recording for their soap operas on the VCR, that kind of dates me a little bit. So now we put our B extrusion on, we do our blind fold joints. Get my head out of the way. And I'm gonna lose these fairly loose just because we don't really need to tighten them down anytime soon. So now we're gonna grab some H extrusions and these are actually temporary. So these are used to square up this kind of Z gantry and make sure that everything is nice and square and then we're actually gonna take them off and use them somewhere else in the future. So it's a little bit of a, one of the weird finicky parts about the V0 is you have a, a couple steps where you do something and then kind of backtrot. So we need H extrusions. So on this kit, your C and H extrusions are the same. So we just used a set of C extrusions. So now I'm grabbing the H extrusions and they're pretty much the exact same as the C. So Temporarily, there's no H or C extrusions left, but we will get, we will reuse these later. So we need to slide these on. Making sure that the washer also goes between the head of the screw and the extrusion. You can probably save yourself a little bit of time by actually tightening these screw heads down to an appropriate level. I did not do that appropriately. Like I could have tightened that down mostly by hand first then I wouldn't have to spend as many wrist turns tightening them down now. Um, I hadn't talked yet about having a, a good build surface. So this is a countertop or a piece of a countertop. I got it from a friend who had renovated their kitchen a while ago and just had some extra pieces. You can see this is like a weird hexagon piece and it was basically the cutout between kind of the gap and two where two corners meet. Um, and it just had been sitting in their yard. I knew I was going to be building a Voron and had asked friends and that's how I came upon having this. Um, it's good for your frame. 
building because it's ideally like the flattest surface you can get. I've seen people build on glass tables on their actual kitchen countertops. Um, you just want the flattest surface you can get to make sure that all of the extrusions are as flat as possible when you're tightening them down. And it will save you a lot of kind of squaring up and cramming later on. Oh, didn't get the hole right. Come on. So I did buy a set of bits. So I don't recommend using kind of your traditional hex bits for anything that you're gonna be tightening down, especially on these M3 or M2 um, screws. These are the bits I used when I um, ended up stripping out a few of my screw heads. But I did pick up these guys, which are essentially the same ends of these RC style bits, but with a quarter inch kind of hex pattern on the end, so you can put them on any screwdriver. So you can get some ratcheting action, which can help speed things along a little bit, save your wrist a little bit of importing. When I first started the FormBot build, I was using the Linus Tech um, the LTT screwdriver. Is this the right size? This is two millimeters. Yep, two millimeters. And the bits that come with it are actually way too short for doing a lot of these frame things because you need to kind of feed them through quite a bit. So that's kind of another benefit of these bits is they're a lot longer. Have much better reach. Tightening and tightening and tightening and tightening. Yeah, if you kind of, for your blind joints, if you kind of tighten them down to just a bit under where they end up needing to be, you'll save yourself quite a bit of time doing this. I'm not even sure that that is tightening correctly. Maybe we'll just stick to these guys. There we go. That's pretty tight on that one. I'm going to go back around and get them just kind of snug. Sometimes you just think you're inside of the, the hole and you're not. Phrasing. Samuel. I had a hard time trying to find a granite piece, so in a pinch, a ceramic tile at Home Depot or Lowe's, snag a level and find a smooth one. For five to 10 bucks, that's pretty good. And you, especially for a V0, you don't need a particularly large one. Um, if you're building a, a Trident or a 2.4. Of course, you'll need um, something that can support at least a 250 millimeter frame. But for a V0, yeah, that's a good shout. Top tip. You know, building a 3D printer in your kitchen on the uh, countertop might not meet the spousal approval factor. Okay. Going on a flat surface. Right 
wrench excess. Now we need to space these correctly and then we're gonna do our final kind of squaring of the entire frame. So I didn't worry about these being perfectly square yet because I know that we were gonna to have to scoot these around. Um, so I just kind of somewhat loosely did them. So we're gonna loosen these up and in these like to stick in the screw heads a little bit. I build on a kitchen island all the time, but the girlfriend is okay with it. This is the way, you, you picked a good one. So we need to get these at approximately 58 millimeters. They say approximately, I think, because you end up kind of, when you're tramming and squaring this, you're gonna end up maybe getting those off so they won't be exactly 58. But here's where some of our squaring tools come in. I've got a set of one, two, three blocks, and then these corner jigs from, I think they're just from Amazon, but you can use them in order to help make sure everything is nice and square when you're measuring things and doing other things. So we can like use a one, two, three block in this corner, but we need to get 58 millimeters. So I'm gonna grab one of my Boron rulers, or I guess I have calipers. I just like to break out the Boron ruler whenever I have a camp. I did give away a lot of those at uh, Earth. And the next time I go to a, a Red Festival, I do plan on having some more. 58 millimeters. So my locking calipers, my nicer metal locking calipers, the battery died and I can't find the battery at any local stores. So I ordered one from Amazon, but it's not here yet. Actually, I think a ruler might work out a little bit better. This particular part. Here, I can use a one, two, three block. Kind of down there to make sure we're flush on the bottom. When I'm happy with the 58 millimeters, then I can tighten this guy down. If I pick up the right driver. Now, again, I didn't torque it down super tight. That one happens to be pretty close to 58 millimeters. Not sure if you guys can see the ruler all that well, but. We'll do the same thing from this side and then we'll go about kind of squaring the whole thing super, super square. But we're actually gonna be loosening these up again when we do the tramming once we get the, the bed mounted. So it's kind of like another one of those things where you do something, you try to be super precise and then you end up kind of undoing it later. And take this down a little bit so it won't shake as much while we get it. The parallelism, if that is a word, of these rails will be pretty, or excuse me, extrusions will be pretty important when it comes to the motion of the bed 
and making sure it does not bind. So I think the little Steve's little trick with the washers is working. I noticed when I was trying to tighten these down when I built the Formbot kit, when I would tighten down the screw and this was loose, it would try to turn with the screw. But I think just having that washer in between the screw head and the extrusion gives the screw the ability to turn uh, without having to worry about that as much. Another shout out to Steve. That one is that pretty close to 68. So since I used this on the bottom and squared it, when you get to this other measurement, it should be pretty close already. It's good to double check, but. All right, now we are going to go about trying to make sure this whole thing is as square as possible. So we want to check these corners against each other not shaking or rocking at all. We can use our one, two, three block inside of here. And then we need to kind of butt the corner up, maybe use this guy out here. You guys see that? And I'm going to loosen this, get it as square as possible, and then retighten it. And these bits are kind of sharp with their edges, which is one thing that helps them not strip out the screws, but it can make it a little difficult to get them out in certain situations. Oh, almost dumped that whole thing of hardware. Air pill. So we're kind of constraining the extrusions and all three dimensions so we've got a flat surface keeping it flat this way we've got something on the corner and something on that outside edge so it should be pretty well square doing it this way i think i ended up redoing this like once or twice the last time when i built the formbot kit but lessons learned, hopefully um, I get everything pretty good from the get go. Oh, that really shook the uh, camera around. You guys see what I mean about the cameras attached to the table and the table's super high. So it's kind of wibbly wobbling about. Uh, so having moving over to the edge of your surface is really handy for being able to kind of come from off the edge. And we should be pretty darn square. I mean, as square as these blocks are. So I'm trying to see if I can scooch these around at all. Don't want to scratch up our extrusion. I know this is kind of the best way I came up with after I redid it a few times of getting this portion fairly square. So where is our top? Our top is this way. Oh, what do you guys think? Pretty square. I don't hear any tippy tapping. Oh, I hear a slight. I don't know if you guys can hear that. There's a slight lift there. Have y'all tried Inland ABS from Micro Center? If so, what's your opinion? Um, I do have some Inland ABS right here. I have been printing uh, some of my underwire parts on it. Uh, so far, it prints fairly easily. It's fairly low temp, like it says 220 to 260. 
I've literally been printing it at like 220 and it extrudes really, really well. When I had it upwards towards 250 on the temperature tower, it kind of oozed a little bit and strained quite a bit more. So um, it seems fairly stable. Uh, it definitely has a lighter ABS smell. So maybe it's got some kind of stabilizing stuff in it to make it a little bit easier to print. I printed it on my Prusa MK3S as well, and it seemed to do fairly well on it inside of an enclosed printer. So um, I can recommend it, I guess, you know, I don't have a ton of experience with it, but so far the parts I'm getting off of it seem pretty, pretty reasonable. Hey, Truggy, sweet, gotta collect them all, have an LDO and TH3D ruler. I didn't know Tim had rulers. I'm gonna have to talk to Tim. I need a ruler, Tim. I didn't see him at um, any festivals this year. I don't think he was at Earth. But I met Tim at Maker Fair New York in like 2018. I won't say it was like TH3 had just started back then, but I, it definitely wasn't like as big as it was, as it is now early days I would say we talked about building custom computers and there's a tiny 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 tap sound here so I'm just gonna loosen it Retighten it. Suppose if you wanted, you could use an extra one, two, three block if it'll fit and lay it on top. And then <laughs> this is super extra. Oh, no, that's too. I can't fit all of those in there, but. So my chat is delayed for some reason. I can see you guys' chat popping up on stream. He was at Indiana, okay. Oh, at um, Murph. Mello has the Swedish rulers, especially the short one. I haven't seen Mello's rulers either. I haven't bought anything from Mello that I am aware of. Maybe one of my BMG internal kits is from Mello. I'm loosening it, trying to get it square, make sure it's flat, retightening. Pretty happy with that. Don't hear any little tippy tap sounds. Yeah, mellow. And it was on a picture, but there, were, there was no ruler. They didn't provide you with one. What did you buy from them? Hey, I think everything is good. I'm gonna re-measure these, to make sure they're at 58 millimeters exactly. good well, got so much stuff around now I need to start putting stuff back when I'm not using it but then you're gonna pull it out a second that's the, the workshop kind of conundrum right you keep your tools out so that you can use, have them at hand but then you lose them and don't know where they are or you take them back to the toolbox every time and then you have to walk across the room James made, I made a joke about that. We need to put our third rail stop on. I think that should be the last one. Uh, no, tap ADXL, other stuff as well. Can't recall. Was all excited, um, like a prize in a cereal box and then nothing. Uh, what is there? Is there a movie or something where a kid is trying to get a prize out of a cereal box and it's not there and he's like destroyed by it? You need an M3 by eight button head. This guy does not go there. 
where did I put the M3 by eight? It's right here. Or am I thinking of um, M3 nut? See, I need a nut. Like as soon as I put the nuts away, I need another one. That's where the hex organizer will come in. I don't know what I did with it. I might have taken it upstairs to organize some hardware for another project. This kind of covers up that blind hole, which is a bit of a thing to be aware of. But in your home. We're done with that stuff. You guys notice anything I missed? Um, so we are now moving on to the bed. So that means we're gonna temporarily put a lot of this stuff away and we are going to start working on the kirigami bed. For the kirigami bed, there are a few different sources. LVO has a couple so they've got this document. This is on ldlmotion.com. I, I should have links to like all of these documents, I think, in the description. So they have this whole guide for building the LDL bed. And I believe if we go back to the build notes, it will refer you to this. So yeah, that goes to ldlmotion.com. So skip pages 36 to 46 and use the guide. So this is page 36 and we want to use this guide. So for the time being, I'm going to set this off to the side. We won't need any frame squaring things for a little while. But we will need some things like a something to do some heat set inserts. We will need the Kirigami bed frame box. Or Kirigami kit box. So I've got that. Let's just get everything out. I think we can kind of have it all loose in the box. So we have some M4 by two screws, which are used to secure the frame to the actual rails. Kind of keep those at hand. We have our wiring kit. We'll need some of that right now um, in some of the prep we're gonna do. We have the actual bed frame which again, the, the paint coating on this is a fair bit nicer than the Formbot kit, I have to admit. I, don't know, I think it's powder coated, but it's like the extrusion. I think it might be the same exact paint, but it has just a nice kind of flake to it and really good quality. And it should hopefully be in spec. Uh, if you guys have seen my LDO, um, excuse me, Formbot kit build streams and or review, the main thing I noted was that the bed was out of uh, spec, so it was like 2.5 millimeters thick in a lot of places, and that caused a lot of the printed parts I got from PIF to not work, so. We are at 1.9 millimeter, two, depending on how I tilt them. 1.9, two, 1.9, two. 1.9 everywhere, so this is in spec. I think it's two millimeters plus or minus 0.2 millimeters is what it says on the LDO, or excuse me, the um, Hiragami documentation. So we're pretty good, happy with that. Let me get this guy started heating up. So this is the Vector 3D heat press. VLMP, is that what it is? Vertical Linear Motion Press. Oh. Well, that's a little jarring, Brian. I've got like a little digital zoom punch-in thing. 
and it's kind of not aligned well. But this is just a little, uh, what is it, Hakko FX600. It's a standalone Hakko soldering iron. I just picked it up for like 30 bucks or something from Amazon so I could have something to use. Uh, you don't need a press like this, but it is kind of nice to have, I will say. It just makes it so that you can pretty consistently put in the heat set inserts. It's nice because you can leave the soldering iron on and not have to worry about tipping it over or having it fall or burn you. Um, it's got a stop on it, so it won't technically like hit the ground and burn your surface. Gives you nice motion. You can change the ballast on it so that it kind of helps you get nice smooth motion. Just a nice to have. Uh, if you're in the US or North America, you can buy just the plans and source the hardware yourself and of course print everything yourself. If you were in the EU or UK, you can buy the kits from him to kind of fully build one yourself. Adam is a um, cool, awesome member of the 3D printing community. He's done several Voron builds on stream and has some reviews and he has some really cool hardware and parts. And he uh, actually went through um, cancer treatment recently and I think it's in full remission. I'm not 100% sure on that, but um, definitely support him. And if you can find anything on this website that looks cool, then uh, go ahead and pick it up. He also has the Darwin re rebuild kind of. So he took the original Darwin build, which was like threaded rods and all this craziness. And at the Sanjay Mortimer Rep Rep Festival, he kind of rebuilt it. So it was like half Voron, half um, uh, Darwin is really, really cool. Uh, the Formbot Kirigami bed was trash. I was surprised how tweaked it was. Mine was fairly square, I'll say. I didn't have to do a whole lot in order to get it to square. So, um, it'll show in the instructions, but you need these flanges to be as coplanar as possible. And as you can see on this one, they're really, really in square. If these are out of square and not coplanar, or if they're out of square, like torqued this way, then when they sit on the rails, they will cause extra kind of friction on the rail. So it's it's really important that the frame is square and nicely, nicely built. If yours comes a little unsquare, then you can kind of tweak it. Is it worth buying a different Kirigami bed from another brand like LDL for the Formbot kit? That's a good question. Last I checked a LDO Kirigami bed frame bed kit. If you buy the whole thing, it's about $25 on Amazon. I'm not sure who sells that. Um, I would try to support a company like West 3D or KB 3D if you can, um, just because they kind of support a lot of creators, but you know, do what's best for you in the end. Sparta 3D is another company. If you're in Europe, um, Sparta's in Canada, but you can get them in the USA too. If you're in Europe, you got um, a, a few different choices, but um, it looks like they're ranging from $25 to $35, $22. You can of course get them in different colors from Formbot. Uh, you can only get the black as far as I know. Their bed literally costs $5. Um, you can buy it it's completely standalone, like just the frame, just the, the bed. It's $5. Um, so read into that, whatever you want in terms of like what the, the possible quality is. Of course, they're looking to manufacture these and have them built as cheaply as possible. Um, so that could play into the discrepancy. I've heard some people who had no problems with the Formbot LDO, um, excuse me, Formbot LDO, Formbot Kirigami bed. Um, I talked to several people at Earth and they said all their parts fit. They didn't have any troubles that I did. It just all went together fine. So it seems like your mileage may vary, um, but we'll see You know how different and better the uh, LDO kit is. So um, yeah, Samuel said yes. Uh, keep in mind the Formbot is only the frame that comes with the kit. And if you buy one of these, it looks like you should get all of the hardware, the Wagos, the, the, L, um, the LCD, LED 
uh, PCB, the thermistor PCB, and the wiring. So, you know, that's what you're getting for 25 bucks or $30. And, you know, you can buy just the wiring kit alone if you want to as well, but, you know, it could be a nice splash of color. I'd say it's it's worthwhile. Is it 100% necessary? No, you can get through the, uh, the FormBot build without it. But yeah, I'll try to give you as much information as I can without saying, yes, you need to buy this because I think that's kind of a, a decision you need to make on your own, depending on you know your budget and stuff. All right, let's start going through these instructions. If anybody else wants to chime in on whether they think it's like a, a necessary thing, then that's fine. Kirigami frame. Okay, that's just the picture of the frame. Uh, so check your metal frame. You need to make sure they're coplanar, like I mentioned. They're not skewed in that direction either. Um, you need to make sure that it's two millimeters. We already measured that. And you need to make sure that there's a 20 millimeter gap. Do it for the Wagos. Wagos are expensive. So take a look at our squareness I don't know if you can see but there's no I'm trying not to press down on it to deflect it at all but there's no gap if one of these flanges was bent in more than the other or they just weren't completely square like that you would need to adjust that if we look at this similarly I see a slight gap on this flange I'm not sure if it's coming through on camera this one is kind of tweaked down just a tiny bit like I can scooch it up and get that gap to go away. Oh, I'm just kind of taking it and just very slightly tweaking it up. And hope I didn't overdo it. Again, I'm trying not to press it too hard up against anything, but that seems pretty good. And then finally, we want to check our um, inner or inner measurement here. If you're going to buy a bed for the v 0 check out Fizik. Fizik has the solid C and C bed, which I think they're the only ones doing that right now. And it's just a solid, it's like essentially this in the form of, it looks like the traditional extrusion bed from, that's in the Voron manual, but it's just a solid chunk of CNC metal like that. And you can buy it separate. You don't have to get the whole kit. Um, so we want this to be 20 millimeters. I'm gonna do this so you guys can actually see it. That's 20, I'm getting 20.2, 20.1, depending on how hard I tap. The, the caliper so this seems pretty and square to me just want to make sure you do all those checks and it should be good let's go back um, Printed parts. So here are some of our bed parts. We need other bed parts. I've got a little side table that you guys can't see that has a bunch of my printed parts. For this, we're going to need the stealth nut. Um, this is one of the pieces that's on the Kirigami bed in the Formbot kit, it didn't fit particularly well. Here's an interesting look at two prints I did before and after input shaping. Project in Dad's Garage, welcome. Thank you for hopping in. Um, Project in Dad's Garage got some pretty good videos on his Trident and a couple other builds. I think he did a, a Urkfa 2.0 video as well. Um, if you guys want to check out his channel, 
Um, you can get some information on those projects if you're interested, but. So the print on the left was before input shaper. The print on the right was after. I don't know if that's coming through all that well. I can see it in person. Can you guys see the ghosting in this part? That was before input shaper and this one was after. So that's just kind of a good example of the changes and results you can get with input shaper. Um, we need this part. We need the cable guide and we need the chain mount. So the chain mount was the other piece that had a lot of problems getting fitted onto the um, FormBot kit. Looks like I did print the, the chain mount in black as well. This is all um, pretty much all Polymaker, uh, ABS and ASA. This is their Army Green ASA. This is their Galaxy Black that has some like nice twinkle to it. This is their Galaxy Light Gray, or is it the Dark Gray? I think it's the Dark Gray. So it's got that same twinkle to it. So I printed some of the parts in multiple colors. I'm trying to decide, I might switch it up later which parts I'm gonna use. That's a big difference. What were they printed on? My V0. So they were both printed on the FormBot V0. One was before input shaper, one was after. And, or maybe I, I did input shaper and I turned it off because I wanted to have an example. I can't remember, but yeah, I, I just noticed the, the part quality difference and was like, whoa, that's pretty extreme. So nut block, chain mount, and cable guide. We also need the front chin piece. We need this guy, this guy will be kind of under the bed. So maybe we'll go with gray and just see what that looks like. Then we also need the diffuser. Did I print the diffuser? The diffuser needs to be in a clear filament. And I can't recall if LDL provides that. That might have been something I missed. But we can get it started printing now. Do you, any of you guys who built this printer, do you recall if LDL provided that diffuser or if you had to print it yourself? I might have missed that in the, um, the notes. Let's go back to the printed parts guide. Um, projects in that garage, they do not include the clear diffuser. So we find the printed parts guide. I already have this downloaded, I'm sure, somewhere, but we're just gonna save it somewhere quick. Um, I have a S1 and did not come with it. They normally send clear filament for you to print with. I do recall that. Well, do I remember that? Do you guys remember if in my unboxing if I had this? I'm opening up Orca Slicer. Oh, there's a new version. So I do have like plates and I probably just missed that I'm trying to get all the colored prints. Done. I really love that feature. 
you can just straight from your downloads, just drag that over. And I don't feel like you used to be able to do that. No clear filament in the V0 kit. I have some clear filament. Is that clear or white? ABS. That's a natural. Cleaning filament is clear, but hmm, hmm, hmm. Do you guys have uh, recommendations for a clear filament? I can try a natural white. I honestly don't even know all the filament I have. Natural will work if you don't have clear. You can rock the natural for now. I'm gonna unload the black that I have in there. It is nice having the, I have an Orbiter Smart sensor on my uh, other V0 and I can just press the button on it and it automatically heats up and will track the filament. I use Polymaker Clear PETG for diffusers. Polymaker Clear PETG. Do I have a clear PETG somewhere? Let me go check the other filament storage spot. That is a natural white delay. I wonder if the microphone works this far out. That's a white PETG. I've seen some of those guides where people show how you can do like a 100% infill PETG at really low layer heights and get it to be like crystal clear. But since we want this to be a bit of a diffuser, we don't necessarily want it to be like perfectly clear, right? So I've got some white PETG. Let's try the white natural ABS, see how it works. All right, we'll kind of keep moving along a little bit while we get that print. I feel like Steve, I feel like Steve is frequently forgetting if something and having to print it midstream. And then bed spacers, did I print those? How, did, how could I possibly forget those? I do have some. One, a two. That's three. Got the bed spacers. So these were actually designed by Steve. They're to help make sure that the bed, the Kirigami bed has slots in it so that you can move the forward, uh, bed forward and backwards to account for the differences in the print head for V0. Zero. zero and V0.1 zero and two. I forget where the switch is, but these little spacers allow you, since they're kind of like cammed, you can put those in there and then that will align it towards the front. And if you reverse it, depending on which side the hole in the spacer is, it'll align it towards the front and the back. It's a nice little contribution from Steve. Uh, question, do you guys know, can you cut a silicone heater for a bed. I do not know. I've never tried. I've always just bought one close to the size I needed and then aired on the side of under sizing it if necessary. So without even having to go inside of 
a web interface or anything like that, I was able to unload the filament. Now, when I get out my white filament and load it up, I can just stick it into um, the printer and it will automatically load it and purge out the old filament. I looks like Dad's Garage said no. Project in Dad's Garage said no, you cannot cut a silicone heater. Um, so most heaters are just essentially giant resistors, if I'm not mistaken. So you run a current through them and they resist the flow of the current and they heat up and they're just kind of very predictable heaters and consistent heaters. So this natural white is pretty translucent. I'm not sure if it shows up on camera. It's probably way overexposed, but it should do good for a diffuser. I'll have to show you guys this smart filament sensor at some point. It's really nice to have. So I'm just feeding it in up through the bottom tube. It's going to reheat. And eventually it should purge the old filament and be ready for the new. Yeah, but given that a heater is essentially a giant resistor. It's a, you know, a path for electricity. If you cut it in any particular spot, it would likely A, damage it and not be able to heat, but B, maybe be a fire hazard. Uh... Let's check out the V0. It is still heating up, so yeah, I just stuck the filament through the smart filament sensor and it's automatically going to heat up to 265 and eventually it should start dumping out filament. Let's keep going through the documentation. Heat set inserts. So they do provide a tool for you in the LDO kit. I can hear it extruding the filament now. Uh, you guys can't see it from that angle, but it's purging the old black filament. In between that and the purge line, it should be pretty good. Let's go back to desktop. Uh, Matter Hackers build PLA is not what we want. Let's go with that. What's the temperature on that? 235. I've been printing it at 245. Let's print it at 230. 30. Uh, because this filament said 220 to 260, I like to try it on the low side usually first. All right, prints away. Yeah, I figured it would mess it up. I got one that is 120, not 100, so it's a little big. That's understandable. Yeah, if it's too big, you're not going to be able to fit your thermal fuse on it. Although you can, some people just RTV the thermal fuse on. Um, but then, yeah, you wouldn't want to drill holes in it, so. Martin, got to grab dinner. Going to leave the stream up for numbers. Thank you. Appreciate that. I actually do that with um, a fair few streamers I watch, even if I'm not, like, able to actively watch. I'll just leave the streams up. All right, so we need to do our inserts. So we're going to start with the Stealth Nut. I've got a whole little bin full of these guys. 
Uh, the LDL kit does come with a insert tool. I happen to have one. Uh, but we just want to place that guy in there. Some people like to have something like a vise. And then you can use something like a wooden block to make sure it's nice and flush. It's hard to see with that message up. Clear the message. Uh, this is probably some of the most finicky ones that you'll have to deal with, to be honest, on these like some of these tiny origami parts. Like this one doesn't have a whole lot of material for you to press into. Um, so you guys can see how like kind of repeatable and stable this kind of makes putting these in. If you're doing them by hand with just a, a soldering iron, it's a little bit more finicky. Well, got to get back to sleep before work. Enjoy the build. Thanks for hopping in. And I, I hope you do um, keep streaming or at least making some kind of video content for your build. Uh, what's the next piece? Stealth chain. Why are you not loading? It kind of seemed like there were some broken images. Oh. This means we need three heat set inserts for this guy. All on kind of the same side. Then we need one for the wire guide. Two for the chin, I like to call it, and three for that guy. So we'll just remember that. Three for you. Uh, so the printer is heating up, and the extruder is already heated, but the bed is taking a while to get to 120. Uh, excuse me, 100 or 105. I oh, wanted Austin say hello, Austin. Uh, would a white kirigami bed look better with white extrusion frame? Or would a blue kirigami bed look better if all the parts are in blue? I'm um, color inept sometimes. I'm not the best with colors either. This is the most kind of out there I've gotten with colors and the fact that there are four that I'm using for this. Um, do you have Fusion 360? Because if you do, you can open up some of the 3D CAD files and start playing with appearances. And there goes my heat. I need to turn off. It's plenty hot in here. I don't know if anybody else in chat wants to chime in. Thanks need to do an update to the ERCF. It's proven to be the most frustrating thing in 3D printing so far. Uh, that's what I've heard. Let me turn off this heat real quick. Plenty of notifications. Off. The bed still isn't heated yet. It's at like ninety something, I think. 
Yeah, um, let Austin know what you guys think about those color options. I think either could look good if if you go for like, I've seen people do almost all one color and even though the filament color is slightly different than the extrusions, it's slightly different than the bed, like it can kind of come together. But yeah, I'm not that great with color combinations either, to be perfectly honest. Let's hope I don't make this just look like a giant pile of puke. This definitely feels a whole lot. I, I, on the last build, I had a different heat press. It was one I kind of put together based off some files from the Adafruit heat press and some of my own personal stuff that I had on hand, and it wasn't nearly as consistent. I like this uh, linear or ver vertical linear motion press from, from Vector 3D. He actually has a 2.4 build where he does a whole lot of max volumetric flow rate and speed tests that I have been using like repeatedly to kind of figure out my uh, max temp or excuse me, max speeds and stuff for my printers. I think he should do a video just on that. I'm not sure if I recommended that to him yet. But yeah, this is pretty fast with this guy. You do have some where they're at a somewhat of an awkward angle, so it's kind of hard to get them completely parallel without putting your life and limb somewhat to risk. But yeah, that's pretty fast, I have to say. I think we have all the heat set inserts done. Our diffuser just started printing, or no, it's now it's heating up from 170 on the extruder for the hot ends to get up to full print temp. We'll see how that turns out. Looks like we'll need it for the next step, but we can possibly just skip this step. I do, I use the Voron color configurator, but they only use the standard extrusion build model. I'll try loading up Fusion. Yeah, it's probably the best way. That's the way I ended up picking these color combinations, but again, I'm kind of with you on not being the most, um, my color theory is not great. Let's see, what was the estimated time for that print? Like seven minutes or something? One minute and 34 seconds. <laughs> oh gosh, this is why V0s are so nice. Um, this isn't real time, by the way, that printer's moving much faster than that. But it should be done in like 30 seconds. Gotta love Vorons. This was, uh, the Formbot V0 was my first Core XY printer. Um, but we can move on a little bit. So in this step, we need to put two hex nuts in the bottom of this guy, like so. So I have a little bit of elephant's foot in this print. There we go, snapped into place eventually. And the print is done. I'll go take a look at it and see if we need to tweak any settings. I did not change any settings whatsoever. I can't remember if it was Stefan from CNC Kitchen that did a video on like how to get really nice transparent 
Um, so it doesn't look like the black purge completely. So I need to do a, a nice big purge. I guess going from black to white is probably the uh, worst case scenario. But there's still some pigment in that print. So I'm going to do a giant 100 millimeter purge and then we'll reprint it. Um, let's preheat to ABS temps. You guys can't see my slicer. Let's turn off the window and turn on the whole desktop. And then let's move our bed down. Let's extrude to 100. Seeing some actual white looking filament now. It's still a little, honestly, a little tinged black. It's lighter than it was before, but. I think I need to do another at least 100 millimeters. Maybe I'll just do 200. That's like absolute worst case scenario going from black filament to white. Maybe the black will give it a little bit of a smoky look. And I can say it was on purpose. Perch, 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 perch. Okay. Purging is done. Yeah, that's looking much better now. So that's something good to know. Reprint, and then I'll show you guys what that was looking like. So you can see how dark that was. Then on the first purge, it's still a little grayish. And then finally on that second purge, it's actually to like a nice white. Hopefully that part will look good. Bring that back up, okay. Uh, we gotta wait for the diffuser for that part, but these guys we can do. So we need our two Wagos. M3 by 6 and our thermistor PCB.
I think we're back. I hope we're back. Sorry about that. I don't know what happened. My network just completely cut out. Um, yeah, I'm gonna try to keep going. Let me know if anybody's still left in the chat, if anybody didn't drop. But we do have a done diffuser now. We back. I couldn't tell if it was my cracky, uh, crappy college apartment internet or the stream. We back. Okay, sorry about that. I don't know what happened. My connection just completely dropped out. Um, I had to restart OBS. Maybe OBS crashed. But yeah, I need to start recording again. We go again. Um, but here is the diffuser in the natural ABS, natural white. Um, so if you go back to the previous step, you need to insert the diffuser into the printed part. Is there a direction for this? So I press that guy in there. It's a little bit of a tight fit, maybe a little bit of over extrusion. That's in there. And then we need to take the PCB and insert it and screw it down. So that's this guy. And they say to have that stuff to the left. Need M3 by six button head screws. Two of them. Thanks for those who stuck around. Sorry about the network issues. Not sure if it was OBS or my ISP or YouTube, but hopefully it doesn't detract too much from the quality of the stream. Connection says excellent now, so hopefully we're okay. And I have misplaced all of the bits that we need. I think this guy will work. I think I might be able to turn off the um, soldering iron. I don't know if we were going to need the heat press much more for a while after this. Locking that with my finger. The overhang on this part was not the best, but the outside of it looks okay. I can replace it down the road if I want. Okay, that part is done. Got the hex screws in the bottom. Let me get the chat back up where I can see it. Chuggy says you're good. Awesome. Thank you, guys. All righty. Got a heat set inserts. Why oh, you no work? Okay, there we go. Um, we need to get both of our Wagos. I think the Wagos is where I froze last time where the stream stopped. So we already had one Wago inserted take our second way go and they just kind of slide in there they have a little bit of a flange on the bottom I think eventually snap into place and we need our thermistor PCB I don't think it really matters which direction this goes it kind of slots in on that side there's a recess for the solder pieces and then we use another m3 by six 
And um, so far the Linus Tech Tip screwdriver with the nice RC style, like I think these are tungsten or some kind of special material bits are working out. They're about as good as the traditional RC style bits so far. Let's see if that continues to be the case. But the ratcheting action is kind of nice to have for getting stuff done quickly. So that's that guy done. Two out of three or four pieces. All right, next up. Next, we have to put our stealth nut onto actual Kirigami frame. And again, this is one of the spots where we had um, some issues on the LDO kit, but you can see the stealth nut fits on like butter. Um, it slides on really, really nicely. So that is likely because the extrusion or the um, the metal is the right size. I really think it was just the paint coat on the Formbot kit that ended up making it too thick. And it's kind of crazy, like 0.5 millimeters made a really, really big difference there. So we need M3 by six. These are M3 by eight. I need M3 by six. Screws, this is a little bit finicky. Um, the main thing that you want to think about with this is if it is a little bit of a tight fit, as you tighten this down, you just want to make sure that it doesn't um, kind of take things out of square. If this does get out of square, it's going to over constrain the beds, basically. Or the linear rails on the bed. I didn't start all the best. There we go. Come out. LTT precision screwdriver coming soon. Are they actually doing a precision screwdriver? I haven't watched WAN show in a little bit, so I feel like I'm behind. I am gonna go ahead and unplug um, our soldering iron. Don't want any angle to your dangle, you could say. I think depending on what angle and dangle you mean, I, I think that's an appropriate statement. I'm gonna do them crosswise in a star pattern just because. So since the, oh, and you do, there is a direction to this and I might not have it the right way. I think I have this upside down. Whoops, sorry. I think the uh, full size LTT is actually gonna be more useful for this part. getting in there. It's like uh, Steve's long boy screwdriver bit. Or it's uh, a hex driver bit. When I restarted OBS, it didn't come back to the size I like. Well, I can't see chat. There we go. Oh, Linus leaked it, he would. Maybe the CEO is gonna have to crack down on him. He's like the Lando Norris of Linus Tech Tips.
workspace is getting a little messy. We're going to have to fix that up a bit. So this part, which is the printed bottom, needs to be facing up. Who makes long head spits? I'm not sure. Do you mean these in particular? These long head spits that I'm using? I got them on Amazon if you search like, uh, what is it? Quarter inch hex ends RC bits, then you can probably find them. Uh, but Steve, uh, from Steve Builds, he has some really, really long uh, bits that he uses for getting into particularly wonky tight spots. And I dropped the screw, first screw down today. Ooh. Be like two and a half hours in, only dropped one screw. Oops, same screw. Oh, different screw. At least we're a hundred percent on recovery so far. How are you doing, Shane? Oh, what did you say? Uh, yeah, those guys. I'll check them out. We're out of set of Wera hex keys. Yeah, I've heard really good things about Wera. But if you are torque using them to torque down some, some stuff, they can eventually wear out. I guess all tools will wear out if you use them enough. I will say the sharp edges on these are really nice for not stripping the heads of the screws, but they do tend to kind of bite into the screws a little bit. So it's almost the opposite problem. They're not stripping them, but they're... So now they're all fairly loose. I'm gonna kinda, if I can get them out, tighten them in a little bit of a star pattern. I'm trying to make sure I don't cause any deflection of the flanges and they don't get kind of out of plane. I think most people who have problems with their Z-axis binding when they're using the Kirigami bed, it's coming from these getting out of plane and not being square. Um, I can try to set up, um, find a link to them, Shane, and send that to you in the future or post it in the video. I don't have like an Amazon affiliate or anything. Doing good building a trad rack. Nice. Are you a pretty big boron builder? Wait, let me look up trad rack. I know the name. Oh, it's climbing stuff. So you just have to set up all your carabiners and such everything you'll need in an ascent, I assume. All right, next up we need our bed chain link. And that's in a different set of boxes. That's in the bed build plate parts. So it is a bit of a um, kind of gift and a gift and a curse having everything kind of prepackaged in different boxes. If you leave them in there, there are times I feel like they're in the, the LDL builds where you're kind of moving between five different boxes trying to find a specific part 
not the worst, but. It is a noticeable difference. So we need, we need to like flip this part around. It needs to go like this, but then this is on the wrong side, I think. Oh, this is in the NX Engineering's MMU multi-material. I was highly mistaken. How can we get this guy out without breaking it? Come on. There we go. I'm out, please. Uh, what warrant do you have? Were there other any other chain links included in the box or something? Yeah. Oh, there's this chain link. But it looks like we need this to curve this way and then this guy to face that way this one is that going to cause our chain to droop unattractively did I get this wrong I used the wrong part this one didn't need to come off. It's the opposite side. RTFM, pay attention. So it's this side that right now this doesn't bend the right way. So we need to pop him off and turn him around. So he needs to bend this way and then face the correct direction for. Hey, Nuno. Is it Nuno? Is there a Inye? Or is it Nuno? So, this is what I'm worried about. I'm not sure if you guys can see that. There's nothing that prevents the chain from kind of folding down this way. So, when the bed's moving up and down, it can kind of flop. Last one, Nuno, okay. And that's a little unattractive, but we'll see how it goes. Uh, coloring the Voron 3D model in Fusion 360 is way too relaxing. I was able to download the model for the Kirigami bed and insert it into the full build model. Works amazing. Yeah, I did that too. And I think that's kind of the best way to to get the color combinations done. Relying on the kind of guide that somebody made from the zero, V0.1 is kind of not the easiest in my opinion. All right, so we got that stuff done. It bends back and forth. But the chain link, chain mount and chain link on the bed. That's this guy and this guy. So again, this was a problem on the Formbot kit, getting this part on. It goes a little something like this. That needs to fit into there and then scooch down. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Um, this part broke off while I was trying to put it on on the Formbot kit just because the Formbot bed, Kirigami bed, was so thick. Nice color, thank you. This is a Polymaker ASA Army Green. 
and we're going for a little bit of a kind of Master Chief Halo color uh, scheme with the whole build. That wasn't already evident. Now we need to pop a, it looks like M3 by six screw. Some of these pictures don't load sometimes. It's a little frustrating. I'm doing a V0 to 0.1 to V0.2 rebuild yourself. Nice. Have you seen Steve Builds' streams? He's a, obviously one of the most popular Voron content creators, but he has done several um, upgrades of older kits. Like I think he did like a V0.0 to V0.2 and a V0.1 to V0.2. Those are interesting seeing kind of the differences that the same printer's gone through. You definitely need to print a Master Chief bust as a test print. That is a, a great idea. I hadn't considered as uh, what like a, a good test print would be. You know, you know me from there. Okay, yeah. Sorry if I don't um recognize everybody's names all the time. I do recognize you. Are you in uh, Tim's stream too sometimes? Uh, do it. And several of the different Boron streamers, content creator streams. Then we need to put just this link, I guess, on. We'll face up and it will be with two, they said butt head screws, but these except, can you guys see that these are chamfered? These accept flathead screws, but they say in their instructions to use button head screws. What do you guys think? Oh yeah, Nuno, you were helping Tim out a whole lot yesterday um, with some of the uh, beacon configuration, if I recall correctly. So there are M3 by eight female screws. Should I use female screws on this or should I do as they say in button head? I guess I'll follow the instructions. Uh, the color correction on this guy isn't the best. Like I don't, I just kind of don't like how a button head sits in that, but I guess it doesn't really matter. Yeah, you're struggling a bit. One major problem I wish he could get figured out is the fact that he can't um, access his printers with the dot local addresses. And that causes him so much trouble trying to find the IP address for the printer. Like every printer he's done, the rat rig, the trident, the trident again. I'm not sure like what the network setting, is it local discovery or something like that, that allows you to do dot local on a network for Windows? But I help out a fair bit in the um, the Voron Discord, and a lot of people actually have that issue. Especially like, uh, who was it? Was it Austin or somebody else? If you're in like a college dorm, then you don't have control over that, and so they turn off some of those settings. So we've got that guy on. I think everything is facing the right direction. Next up, we need to put this guy on. It's like the bottom of the print will face up and we secure it with another two M3 by six screws. I do like how well screws hold on to these bits. Tim needs all the help. Tim is, he's great. I like him. I like his streams. Sometimes I wish I could just like reach through the screen and, and help do some of the stuff for him, but. That bit really likes to get stuck inside of some of the screws. 
So this is the one time, well, one of the few times I think I actually need to use a ball end screw in order to get this particular screw in. That's big. Maybe not. Maybe it's just high enough you don't need a ball end. Eh, kinda. Kind of not perfectly straight. You guys see that? A ball end is kind of useful for this one in particular. But otherwise, avoid the ball ends. That's some of the color two-toneness. I printed this piece out in a couple different colors, so I'm just gonna kind of get it on the printer. And if I want to change it out for either the, the Galaxy Black, which I have another version of it somewhere, or maybe even the green, then I'll swap it out later. I got the Fisec uh, CNC bed for the V0 instead of the Kirigami. People say it's a bit more solid and definitely feels like so. I can imagine, yeah. Um, I guess the weight isn't a concern whatsoever, so the rigidity would just be really helpful. But one solid piece is nice. It makes, like if you, it's it's basically a version of the, the extrusion plus prints that comes, you know, stock in the boron kit, but as a single piece of, um, CNC to aluminum, so that is pretty nice. Next up, we need the cable guide. That slips in this way. Uh, do I have that wrong? Up that way and again that fits so much better than the on the form bot bed um, there is a guy who redesigned several of these pieces to work on the Voron bed I have links to them in my github um, excuse me the form bot bed I have links in my github where he expanded the gaps here just so it works with the 2.5 millimeter ish Formbot bed, so if you're having trouble with these pieces not fitting, you can go download those. Um, check out my Formbot GitHub. And that needs a M3 by six, secure it. Okay. Did I put that threaded insert on the wrong part? I think I did. I think that threaded insert is meant to go on the bottom. Yeah, I'm building the kit as stock initially. I'm um, kind of doing a, a bit of a review. Um, I, I like for the videos to be a little bit of a build guide in some regards for folks. And then I kind of go a little wild with the mods. That's what I did with the Formbot kit. Gotta reheat up the soldering iron. Sorry for the shaky cam. And that's something to note. I put the threaded insert on the wrong side. It doesn't hurt anything, I don't think. It's just to secure the bed, uh, the frame to the, the printed piece, so. I guess that's somewhat standard for people who do like somewhat reviewy type content is to build it stock to give people an idea of what it's like, you know, of its own merit and then do mods later if you want to. Makes sense in my head. Hopefully people appreciate it. There are a lot of very standard things people do with most borons. Now we're going to get our screw. And 
then that part is done, we need to do the front, which will be two more M3 by sixes. Into our pre inserted hex nut. V0, uh, the form bot V0 just turned off behind me, it just cooled down enough. Get down to 50 degrees. Don't roll away. Cool, the LDO kit got some nice upgrades already. LDO kits are usually crazy expensive here in EU, unfortunately. Yeah, um, that's a good like thing to, to note. The LDO kit, obviously really high quality parts like the extrusions, people say the extrusions are some of the best. Their motors are really well known for being high quality. Um, and the features included are pretty nice if you want them. So, you know, getting a Boron Revo is a really, really nice upgrade. But what if you wanted to use a Rapido in your kit? Are you gonna buy the, form, um, excuse me, the LDO kit and then just use the Voron Revo in some other place. That's like a $140 value if you buy the Voron Revo just on its own with two nozzles. So, you know, the Pico Bilicals, another like $40 or $50. The, the Kirigami bed stuff is another like $20. So it's a um, really nice kit if you want the upgrades. If there's some stuff on it that you don't really want, then maybe um, it could be worth going with the lower end kit and then buying the pieces that you want because you can get a lot of the LDO stuff. Um, as individual kit pieces. I got a Trident, uh, Fisec Trident 300 for basically half the price of an LDO kit. That's nuts. Okay, how close are we to being done with the Kirigami bed? Assembly is complete. We can secure the bed to the frame. So let's get rid of some of this stuff. Cables remanaged. Um, I have the 2.4 LDO kit. The bed is thicker than what was on the bomb. Yeah, that's another upgrade I forgot to mention on the V0 kit. You have that polymide, what is it, 120 watt PSG or um, bed. And that definitely increases the, the heat up time for the kit. Uh, I just got a Voron Revo after my printer is built. I'm getting that Diamondback uh, polycrystalline diamond nozzle for it. Dang. Is that from um, Diamond? Is that from E3D or is that like a... Somebody else makes that. All right, we need to make some space to get our frame back out. Maybe we can just put this aside for a while. We won't be pushing that wire through for a little while. We got our KBD, uh, KB3D screwdriver, flathead, nice for prying on stuff. Frame up here. Uh, I definitely buy an LDO kit, but I usually mod my printers a lot and it's not really worth it for me. Exactly. Yeah, that's something I pointed out in my form bot review. Different people kind of value different things and depending on your end goal, getting all those feature kind of improvements might not be in line with what your future goal for the printer is. So if you're going to build a printer for ants and you're starting from a kit, it might be worth it to get a slightly lower end kit that doesn't have a huge ton of feature ads on it and then kind of doing a hybrid self-source to get the stuff that you actually do want. 
All right, so now we're going to attach the bed to the frame to the uh, carriages. Hopefully the alignment is nice. We need M two by four screws, which are individually packed in the um, kit for us. I have a 120 watt AC bed for your V0.2, nice. From the initial V0 release, the 24 volt 60 watt struggles. Yes, absolutely. I was able to get the Formbot one up to 110, but it took it quite a while to get up that high. And um, in terms of like actually providing ambient temperature inside of the enclosure to get the chamber temperature up, it took, it takes quite a while to heat soak that to get it up to like 40 or 45 degrees. So this is a spot where we might want to use thread locker. Yes, they do call that out. I've got my chapstick, the forbidden chapstick right here. I've started using this instead of any of the liquid stuff. This feels a little bit easier. It doesn't get stuck. Come on, Brian. I'm obviously a professional. Uh, E3D partnered with them to make a, the Revo nozzle, the company Diamondback makes drill. Yeah, I saw some of their, um, their little talk at Earth. They're a pretty cool company. So, Steve recommends getting these started kind of by hand because you want to make sure that they get started pretty straight. And we abide by Steve whenever possible. Got a lot of experience building these printers. For sure, my Trident, which is way bigger, can achieve higher chamber temps than my V0. Now I'll be able to add some bed fans or something like that. Um, for your V0, there is a guy named Lick on the Voron forums, and he produced this little PCB. So this would replace the, um, the standard spot for Wagos, and it breaks everything out as um, you can use like JSTs or Molex, anything that's 2.4 millimeter um, pitch. And it's a nice little PCB, uh, something to consider, but it also breaks out a fan for you, a 24 volt fan, a 40 millimeter that you can put under your bed to help distribute heat. Um, if you go to the Voron forums and search for build logs for the Formbot V0, uh, it's a user called Lick and he has this cool PCB. Or at least his name on the um, Boron uh, Discord is Lick. Yeah, it's a pretty good slick thing. Um, I was talking to him. He used my videos as a, somewhat of a resource for doing his build. And he mentioned that uh, he was looking for a way to get a fan, the fan under the bed. So he designed that. And uh, yeah, she sent one all the way over from the UK. So thanks for that. One thing I really like about the Voron community is the sense of community and people sharing their designs sounds like they'll be at Remurf who's uh, who's gonna be at Remurf sorry Diamondback I'll definitely look at that, thanks. I'm not sure if he shared the PCB design yet, um, but you could probably convince him to send you the files if you wanna get it made. He's not really like selling them as far as I know, but it's a cool design. My hands are entirely too big to fit into some of these spots.
Diamondback, okay, yeah. I didn't have much luck with the stock power supply on my S1 kit, had a bad fan. Uh, the Morsen caused my MCU to shut down, that's not good. They were the latest editions. When is uh, Rocky Mountain gonna be? It's really far from me. I want to go. Um, I've been to uh, Earth several times, the first Earth, and I guess it'll be 3D Printopia in the future. It's gonna be hard to tighten these with this guy on there, the um, the Wago mount. I think we're gonna to have to take that off in order to actually get this tightened down onto the frame. That, that was a little bit too much thread locker. Uh, but I guess a little benefit of the Kurigami kit that is not aligned. Get it in your home. There we go. Is that uh, you don't have to worry about the thread locker possibly deteriorating any of the ABS parts, which is a concern with um, the stock bed. I've seen it, some contention around how much or if thread locker actually does deteriorate parts. Um, some people said that they've used it and have notably gotten it on there and haven't gotten had any issues. Uh, that's also another reason I got an AC bed on mine. Yes, on the rebuild, definitely gonna go AC bed. 420 and 421, okay. Delta 350, I think is your, I think you're East Coast like me. Oh, you're talking about the, fl the flight price? Yeah, I'm in Virginia. So I would fly out of um, Roanoke, but I don't think they have any direct flights out of Roanoke or I would drive down to Charlotte or up to DC. It's like three and a half hours versus four. This is definitely a little finicky to get started. You want to start them as straight as possible so you don't strip anything out or cause any kind of deflection. Two more screws. Were any of you guys at Earth that I might have incidentally run into and not realized? Or maybe we met. Maybe we were standing next to each other at one of the, the raffles, the LDL raffle or the... Crucer raffle where they raffled off like a, did they raffle off an XL? I feel like they did. I'd like an XL. I like tool, two head changers. So maybe if I build a Trident or a, a 2.4. Austin, howdy state neighbor. You're in, in North Carolina, cool. Um, they just added a, um, uh, Micro Center in North Carolina, which is nice if you need to quickly pick up some filament. Um, the Micro Center in Northern Virginia actually has some boron parts. They have a lot of CNC boron parts, I think, by uh, Chaotic Labs in stock. And then they've got some other 3D printing consumables, a lot of filament. Um, so, yeah, I'm happy that there's a Micro Center a little bit closer to me. The one in Northern Virginia is like four hours away, and the one in Charlotte, it's a little bit closer. Oh, I'm in Richmond, we're practically neighbors. Yeah, that's not too far. It's um, 81 to 64 to get over to Richmond. Uh, I have some friends who are from there. And I uh, have visited them numerous times. Not use M2 by eight. Uh, for the stock extrusion bed frame. This is a new build, continue reading the Voron manual on page 47. Back to the manual at hand. 
Okay, so I didn't tighten things down yet. Do they want us to? And what's going to be the best way to tighten it down? Kind of a cross pattern, I would imagine. Uh, what is this, a 1.5? Do I have a 1.5? So let's put that on the long line if that's good. Whatever. Uh, they did. Gonna be about 30 minutes away in South Charlotte. So excited. Yeah. Let me know if you come down. I will. Um, I plan on anytime I build a PC, I usually try to do it from Micro Center's in store deals. Like there's some of the craziest deals you can find. On PC parts. Then they also sell a lot of uh, uh, sim racing gear now. So we're doing this in a little bit of a star pattern, trying to keep the driver as vertical as possible. I will say the uh, paint coating on both the extrusions and the Karagami bed is pretty good. I've slipped with the driver a few times so far and um, it hasn't just completely scratched things up, which is good to see. So I'm kind of getting a good finger tightening. You can see how these bits like to kind of stick in the hardware a little bit. All of them mostly tightened down. And uh, it seems surprisingly fairly well trimmed. Now granted my previous experience was with the Formbot one which kind of naturally over constrained everything. Uh, because the frame was too thick and it caused it to kind of deform when you put the printed parts on. So I think I took this apart two or three times on the Formbot kit, just trying to make sure it was nice and, nice and square. But honestly, that is not binding whatsoever, so that's good to see. It doesn't really skate along there but that's really not necessary like you just want it to be able to move up and down smoothly um cramming loosen three screws and bring your bed assembly all the way to the bottom now that these derails are properly spaced and the bed is in position you can tighten screw number one then scoot it up I mean, I don't know how much timing I need to do. Like, do you guys think I really need to spend all that much time tramming it? This is kind of like great. I had to spend so much time to get my bed to move like this on the last kit. Now, how much is that? Maybe because I'm a more experienced builder and I made this whole frame a whole lot um, better this time. And how much of is it is it? Ugh, I can't speak right now. How much of it is that maybe the uh, the parts are better? I definitely think the Kirigami bed frame is more to spec, and that's contributing to things being a bit better. Jack, I'd be happy with it. Yeah, I'm I'm pretty happy with it. I don't think I need to do much. I just need to make sure. I mean, really, this should be pretty square already. 
because of the steps we took earlier on. Yeah. That's maybe. That's a touch, not at 90 degrees. I don't know if you guys can see that tiny bit of wobble. That one's good. And that one I can't really get to because, oh, screwed it up, Brian. So maybe up here a tiny bit, I could trim it. Good enough for the girls I run with. <laughs> I think I'm happy with it. Um, so I'll show you guys what the instructions show. Tram the bed. Uh, so basically the process would be loosen screws number one, two, and three. Bring the bed down to the bottom. That would correctly make sure everything was correctly spaced and you would tighten down the bottom and then you would try to make sure that you keep everything square, move it up to the top tight number two and tight number three. And basically you could kind of loosen and tighten them as you move the bed along different parts of the rails and that would kind of help tram things. But this is, um, I'm really happy with this kind of straight out of the gate. This is what you kind of want to see. It doesn't necessarily need to fall under its own power or weight, but that's a good indication that you have no binding. Send it. Uh, where did you guys get the all the machinist blocks or corner things? So these are called one, two, three squares. They're a machinist tool. I learned about them from Adam Savage. If you guys haven't noticed, I have a lot of Adam Savage artwork behind me on the walls. He's a kind of big inspiration for me in getting into making. But um, yeah, you can get these on Amazon. They're stainless, but I think you noticed there's probably a little bit of rust. I actually had a flood at my house and um, a lot of stuff that was Stainless, you know, there's different quality of stainless. I've gotten a little bit of rust on them, um, but they're really handy for stuff like this. I also have these um, frame building or corner brackets squares that are, are helpful for building frames as well. So uh, just Amazon, eBay, look for one, two, three blocks. And they have them in different sizes. Like they have like four, five, six and different stuff like that. Alrighty then, let's keep chugging. Uh, they have another section about even more trimming, which I don't think we need to do. Maybe we can get our frame Z in stop going. Adam talked me into them too, yeah. He's such a good knowledge and um, such a good gateway kind of helper of people getting into making. I use them all the time. I had a, a few of them. I had them a few years. They're great. I, I mean, even for just a paperweight <laughs> um, and making sure things don't roll around, they're really helpful. I use them like I'll hold them, use them as a little bit of a vice to hold up parts sometimes. They just come in handy for a lot of stuff. I probably don't use them nearly as much to um, what they're designed for, but what a true machinist would do, but yeah. I'm looking for our Z in stop bracket right now. And this guy. Okay, we got a choice to make. My default is to go with green for a lot of the stuff, but I do want a little splash of color every or different kind of color every once in a while. So I think I'm gonna start with the green, unless you guys think um, I could go with this gray. And really I could reprint it out of the black too, if I wanted to. But the galaxy black I wanted is a little bit of splash where there's too much green because the galaxy black up against the black frame, I don't feel like would look all that good. So it's gonna be that or that. I mean, all of the other, right now, all the other guys are green, so I kind of feel like maybe the green would be the way to go. We're gonna go with the green. Okay, we need to get our Z in stop micro switch, which is in 
another box. So this is one of those other times where you have to go hunting for some stuff in the LDO boxes. Overall, it's a good thing to kind of have things pretty well organized, but you do have to kind of hunt around for stuff every once in a while. This is our Z and stop switch. Green for that one? Yeah, I, I concur. And so if I face it away and down, we want the switch on the left side. And we want to use two self-tapping screws to get these guys, to get this guy connected. I have those marked as M210P. They're very long screws. And they are actually um, metric hex on this kit. On oh my, come on. On the form box kit, they were like Phillips head, which we were like, there was three times in a whole build I had to break out a Phillips head. It was kind of annoying. And I'm kind of indiscriminately switching between, um, uh, when I'm using the LTT versus not, I don't really have a rhyme or reason. Sometimes it's just literally whatever one is kind of closest to me when I need it or whichever one I find first. I'm doing this backwards. You're supposed to do it from the back. That's why it's spaced like that. Well, that first screw is just to hold it in place while I put in this second screw. I meant to do that. Totes. Totes my goats. Do you guys do a lot of colorful builds? Somebody asked before Maybe it was Austin. Somebody asked about a, a specific color combination. Um, this is my first build where I've really paid attention to the colors. Have I ever tried the Vantix electric screwdrivers? No, I have a Hodo electric screwdriver, which I've had to charge this once since I got it. Um, 3D Print SOS kind of turned me on to it. It's a really powerful electric screwdriver. The charge lasts really well. I recommend this one over the pencil style one uh, because it has a lot of torque. The pencil style one doesn't seem to kind of be able to torque into plastic all that well, but this is on the lowest setting and it will strip out plastic. So this is the electric screwdriver I've been using. I haven't really heard of the Fantix. I'll have to check them out in a bit. All right, so I think that's on there the appropriate way. This is a difference in the V0.2R1 kit. Um, it used to just be one side on here and people noticed that when the bed hit it, it would possibly cause it to droop and displace a little bit. So um, recently in the V0.2R1 revision, they have changed it to this double-sided one. And it's got the, the idler eyes on it, even though it's an in-stop. I don't know, is there a joke about that? Um, so nice things about the LDO kit. It's already, you know, pre-done for you, but most kits are now. It already has the lever removed, so you don't have to worry about removing the lever. And then they've not attached this JST housing so that you can fish it through um, just uh, everything a little bit easier. So small things, kind of nice to have. Always nice to be able to, to skip a few steps so we are going to just use hex nuts we need m3 by 8 got to put up your question we're just gonna feed that through and start the hex nut And we're not gonna bother using a, uh, what do you call it? A no drop nut on this since we're just kind of sliding something on. 
it doesn't need to hold in place for very long. It's just kind of how I roll. So I do think that um, doing the Steve style blind, um, blind joints where you put a washer over your blind joint uh, screw heads probably helped in the squareness of my frame a little bit. Um, at least I'm going to give him credit for it. So I think we just slide this guy all the way up, make contact and then tighten them down. Uh, so definitely notice that this went faster for me than the last one I built. That's too small. And I think we're going to need a ball in for this guy. Okay, happy manufacturing. Thanks for hopping in. Great stream tonight. Project in Dad's Garage is back. We're, we're still going. Um, we just got the, the Kurigami bed mounted. It took a little bit longer than I would like. Overall, I'd say, you know, this is probably two streams of work. I'm getting done in a single stream. So I'm fairly happy with it. And we want to make sure that we get a, you guys won't be able to hear it because the uh, noise cancelization. 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 I can't speak right now. Cancellation. Just throwing extra, you know, syllables where they don't need it. But it is making contact with these, uh, the switch. But yeah, we still here. Next step. We need to preload some nuts and we need to remove the H extrusions. So again, I mentioned that these, this is like one of those strange things with the V0.2 where a couple times you do something and then you kind of undo it. But overall, it helps you get you a nice square frame. So it makes sense. It's just kind of like, spent all that time squaring these two extrusions up and now I'm undoing them. Right, let's go back to stubby. Get the ratcheting action going. Love your scene transition, by the way. Thank you. Um, it's a pretty standard YouTube tutorial you can find for like OBS uh, transition. I, I made it in After Effects, but there's also some tools that you can use to kind of make them without any like dedicated software. But uh, I kind of felt like it just adds a little bit of nice just to the production quality to the stream. Every time I kind of start a stream series, I try to add a little bit of like something nice to it. I think I mentioned I'm really into camera gear and production stuff. So it's kind of almost it's more for me than it is for you guys. But I appreciate that you noticed it and, and like it. slide these extrusions off once they're loose enough. I too. There we go. So I think that the washer, so here are the washers I'm referring to. I've got them on the end just under the screw head and that's a little top tip that Steve, Steve Builds likes to do that I have copied. Uh, preloads nut. We 
speed two on the top. So that's oriented just like they have it. I might run out of no drop. That's I might have to start doing some more. Uh, two on the top. I can just barely get them in with um, the blind screws in there. They do say to leave them in. Uh, you might have to like untighten them a little bit in order to get these to be able to pass through. Two on the top, one on the back. Trusting you guys to let me know when I mess something up, so keep an eye out. Two on top, one on the back. We already had some preloaded here, and then two on the bottom back. Oh no, my frame got out of square. Did you guys see that? I guess I didn't have it tightened down enough. Hopefully nothing moved too seriously, but we need to... I think this did end up happening to me when I was building the Formbot kit. That's definitely a sign I could tighten things down a bit more. Won't get, there we go. Still pretty flush on the ends. Hopefully pretty square. Come out please. Uh, where were we before we had to do that? Can I even do this guy without pulling him out? No. So that is something you would try to avoid. Make sure you tighten these down enough when you're doing the whole furnace. Learn from my mistakes. Sorry for the shaky cam. Come out. And this guy is gonna be hard to get to, but we're pretty tight now. Where were we? Trying to get this singular. And then we check. That's still trimmed well. Um, projects in dad, uh, projects in dad's garage. Um, if you message me on Discord or um, tag me in Steve's chat, I can send you a link to the tutorial I use for the transition. If you're interested. So that drop nut, I just didn't have coming in at the right angle and it was being a little difficult. Two and three nuts down there. Two in the box, ready to go. So we've got two on top. We have one in the back top and two in the back bottom. That looks like most everything absolutely will sweep. Yeah, if any of you guys know me and have seen me in like any of the other Voron discords, uh, feel free to message me about anything or DM me. Well, I mean, maybe not about anything. You probably don't want to 
message me about like life lessons and stuff. But a two M3 nuts. I don't know if it's just like my dyslexia, but seeing two M3 next to each other, for some reason, it can get a little cross to my brain and I, I start to load three nuts in instead. I don't actually have diagnosed dyslexia, but um, I don't know, weird stuff like that happens in my brain, gets crossed. All right, hopefully that's all the preloaded nuts and we can start working on cross members. So we need, are all of these E-extrusions? So these two were E-extrusions. We should have two E-extrusions left. Over here, we do. Thanks, no problem whatsoever. All right, so we put these threaded inserts away. Probably need the hex nuts out. M3 and M8s are needed all the time. Okay, now's the time. Do I rotate this rail such that the LDO is facing up? when it's mounted, even though no one will ever see it. What do you guys think? It's gonna take like five minutes to do that. Am I crazy? You guys will know, anybody who watches the stream back will know that this isn't correctly oriented and will tease me forever. <laughs> I'm leaning towards doing it unless you guys stop me. I risk actually stripping screws on doing this. It's probably not worth it at all. Okay, I'm doing it. He's doing it. I mean, there's not going to be uh, an X gantry or a rail on this for quite a while. We're going to have to see that every day until this build is almost done. How could you not, you know? Now that I know it will bother me when I rewatch this, if not, it's a fun Easter egg. That's true, I didn't think of that. That's probably like a YouTube secret, like having little things that your audience is in on. Uh, where are our spaces? Other one, hello. Oh, well. I didn't think of the Easter egg angle angle at all. This to be 38 millimeters. It should be 38 millimeters when pressed right up against the uh, the rail stop. But let's double check. I mean, it's 38 millimeters depending on how hard I want to press into the. Uh, can I move it 0.1 millimeters? Man's amazing. I mean, these aren't the most accurate calipers, but. Okay, so I feel like the second set of um, What are they called? Nut bars don't strip as easy as the first set. Just as I tension these down, this is the first set, I, I notice I need to be way more delicate when tightening them. Like that one stripped out, just with fingertip tightening. That's annoying. 
I think we should still be good. I don't know if they absolutely calculated the uh, amount of force needed in the number of screws. But yeah, these th that's st stripped out fairly easily compared to the other one, so. All right, we need these two E extrusions. The LDLs will be facing up. I feel like mommy dares. No wire hangers staff. Oh, we need to put this guy back on. Again, probably showing my age with that mommy dears quote. It's not a movie I would have watched on my own, but I just only remember my mom and parents watching it. Or my mom's friends watching it. My parents' friends. Words are hard. Okay, so we need to get all four of these E extrusions on this guy. This is a little bit of a funky part I don't like about this build. You've got the Z end stop on here and it makes it hard to make sure that this is nice and flush because it's constantly just flopping around. I kind of wish they would just have you do that later. It doesn't seem like it needs to be on here right now at all. I mean, it's not preventing that rail from coming off anymore. Uh, we need two extrusions down here. Line joints facing the right direction. I'm making sure that the washers go inside of the extrusions. And I guess we just tighten them up enough to get the frame to be kind of square. square it up fully later. So I'm going to scoot it over to the edge. Let's take a one, two, three block. Slide it up underneath there. It'll fit. How some of you guys stand to have builds sitting around for weeks in progress is beyond me. Part of the reason I don't stream builds is because I start at like 4 a.m. and go until midnight. Repeat every day. Yeah, it's for the content. It's kind of, um, it's a double-edged sword, right? Like I like being able to talk with people while I'm doing stuff. So that's kind of nice in terms of um, trying to lock stuff down to when I'm streaming. The screw head right now. Well, nope, I had it right the first time. Not finding the head of the screw. Oh, do I have the right bit in? There it is. Alright. Alright, so I just used the one, two, three block to kind of square up this corner while I was tightening it. It should be pretty flat and flush. Do the same thing with the other side. We can't, so we'll we'll do it on this edge instead, or this corner. These bits, they're maybe a little bit too sharp. They really like to stick into the hardware. I'm 
another gift and a curse type situation. Sorry for the shake in the camera. I think I'm gonna buy another tripod mounts that can just kind of be more freestanding. You just go and go until the build's done. Understandable. Yeah, it gets lonely sometimes. Really digging the green, thank you. Um, this is my me being adventurous with the colors. It's probably not all that adventurous to other people. I mean, Zombie, uh, Hedgehog, and Mandy really, and even Steve. I don't think Steve gets like crazy wild with his color combinations, but they're really nice color combinations. Like well thought out. I love the switch wire build with the, um, for the Charlie themed color scheme. I'm fairly boring. If it was, if I didn't have any like outside inspiration, I'd probably do like straight up Voron black and blue or black and red color combo. But we're trying, we're trying to make things a little bit more interesting. If things don't come naturally to you. I guess that's the only way to kind of get better at them, right? Is to, do them probably mess up a few times is that normal for you guys that your bits kind of get stuck inside the screws is it soft hardware is it two sharp edges of the bits that's feeling there's a slight little, slight little tap there. We're gonna like have to redo everything or resquare everything later, but all right, let's flip it upside down. We need to keep it such that the LDO will be right side up later. Oh, what did Chuggy say? Oh. carriage almost came off the rail right there I don't know where the stopper went I probably took it off let me catch up with chats we need an FTE frame I want to build a vibrant purple with space gray frame some something <laughs> any printer I've had it, uh, I've had that with my drivers. Didn't happen on the ball ends as much, yeah. This is an awesome color scheme. I am the same way, I used an F1 car as a color palette. Yeah, the, um, the, the McLaren one, right? Was it the golf color scheme from McLaren that you did on the, was it a Trident that you did that color scheme on? This is just not going on well. But, And I guess these can go almost down to the rails. I think there's a small gap there. And this one we have to do on this kind of backside. And I think we'll have to measure out another specific millimeter measurement for these. Line joints measured up on our line. Cords are still hard. That's not aligned at all, Brian.
So for this one, we actually get some interference from the rails. You can't like perfectly align stuff. You guys know what I mean? Like the rails don't let these sit flat. Sometimes I have a really hard time getting bits like locked into the. Head of the screws. So since these rails kind of protrude a little bit, they don't allow this to sit perfectly flat. See how it rides on the rail. So I guess we're gonna have to do it in the air. I can't quite remember how I handled this last time when I built the form by kit. Come out. Maybe I will do the rest of this, not with the LTT screwdriver, but with the RC style bit. What are these, 2.0? Uh, no, the Lando Norris F1 car, but yeah, on the Trident. Um, DLL PDF makes custom color cut uh, kits for Voron. I have gotten my white ones. I haven't gotten my white ones from them yet, but I will do when I do. I'll share my thoughts. Yeah, I saw them at Earth. They had a booth set up. Um, their extrusions look pretty high quality. I think they do powder coating um, and not anodization. I don't know if one be considered better than the other. But they do everything in their machine shop, which is pretty cool from talking to them. to load up for blind joints. So if we rotate this back the correct way, our LDOs are face up. We did it okay. This guy. Just tighten them so that they'll kind of stay in place for now. Okay, we need our washers. I'm gonna reset and reorganize a couple of things. Our rail guides we won't need for a little while. Those out of the way. Another weird part of the V0 build is that you kind of perky jerkily start on some parts of the build and then stop like the Kirigami bed. You got it like 60% done. And the instructions have you like, you know, identify all these parts that you don't end up using for a little while. So something to be aware of. We need M3 by 10 and our washer. Uh, Night Hawk arrived for the Trident Leviathan. Um, We'll have a friend, nice, with the uh, LDO PCBs. So more time taking that printer apart than I do printing. This is why I stopped building drones and RC cars, love building. Yeah, kind of the problem Steve, well, I guess his name is Steve Builds. He likes building printers more than he likes like printing things on them. Um, does the powder coat get into the way of the sliding parts on the extrusions? I have seen some DLL PDF colors. I like the selection they have. Hey, Sunny. Yeah, is that referring to um, Chuggy's question about the powder coating? 
what are we doing? We are M3 by 10. Put the M3 by 8 up and get them out of the way and get our M3 by 10 out. Eight of them? Yeah. And um, you guys weren't here earlier. What I'm doing is I have a whole bunch of extra of these shims and washers. So I am using them and putting them on the screw of our blind joint. Um, screws, I'm sorry, yeah, uh, our blind joints. And uh, that's hopefully helping the extrusions not warp when we tighten things down so much or kind of torque and, and turn themselves out of alignment. I don't know if you guys have built a war on frame and kind of noticed that phenomenon where you tighten things down and the extrusions like to, to kind of turn on themselves. This is supposed to help with that. Hey, the man is here, Fetter. Fetter is about to start on a Micron build, right? Did I let the cat out of the bag with that? I think you already said that on stream once, right? So if anybody has any cool mod ideas for a Micron, let them know. Yeah, Micron plus build beaks. Uh, V0 is the hardest to square. I, I mean, I only have uh, experience with the V0 so far, but I do recall it being kind of a, a finicky thing the last time I built one, the Formbot kit. Again, I'm fairly happy with the um, the finish on the extrusions and they're not getting scratched up as I kind of flip things around and rub metal against metal. They're standing up fairly well. The uh, form bot extrusions weren't bad in that regard, but there were a couple spots where I was like, oh, scratch that. Nah, it's all good. Okay, cool. If we can get the frame mostly assembled tonight, I will be very, very happy. Um, LDO red extrusion marked really easily could just be the color as my space gray LDO frame took more of a beating. That's interesting. I wonder if it is it anodization versus powder coating or anything like that. Yeah, Formbot kit. I won't be there sadly. Didn't have save enough. So I decided to buy a new camera for the channel instead. What camera did you get? Is it like a Micro Four Thirds or a DSLR? I just watched your review of the Formbot kit. Uh, it really was the most in depth one out there. Thank you. Uh, thank you for watching. Thank you for hopping in here. I uh, put a lot of time into that review. Um, not only just building the printer, but trying to, you know, put together the um, disc, uh, Discord uh, GitHub for it, and then also just editing the video. I probably put about, I don't know, 40 hours into editing that video, going through all the streams and picking apart all the... Um, picking out all of the, the parts that were relevant to what I was talking about. And then my computer was a very old computer, so it wasn't handling the 4K footage all that well. So that took, you know, made the editing process even longer. I have since then rebuilt my editing computer. So hopefully subsequent videos will be much better to, to edit. But uh, thank you, appreciate that you enjoyed the video. Uh, Chucky, both anodized, just maybe the color. Gotcha. Look forward to the Micron. Have it in my cart a couple of times. 
was never sure. What was the Lumix S5 II with a 20 to 60 and 50 millimeter lens? Empty the YouTube account. Yeah, camera gear would be like that. Camera gear and computers. But if it improves the quality, if it makes the process more enjoyable and a little bit easier, then it can definitely, you know, pay dividends easily. So, so far, Fetter, we've gone with mostly green on the colors. Several parts I've printed out in multiple colors. Um, I don't want it to be every single part is going to be green. We're trying, I'm trying to think, you know, specifically where there's a whole lot of green, I'm going to throw in either the black or the gray and then very sparsely the gold. That's the plan. Again, I already mentioned to everybody, I'm not that great with colors, but I'm trying to, trying to be, you know, thoughtful about it. Full frame 6A, yeah, I bet. I've got all um, crop sensors on all my cameras, so. Uh, did you get the diffuser printed? I did. So the stream cut out for a little bit. That was a little bit of, that was fun. Um, I've had zero drop frames since then, so I'm not sure what it was. Maybe OBS crashed. Maybe it was YouTube. Um, but I got the diffuser printed. I'll show it in one second. So it's on there, on the front. And I did it in natural ABS. So it went from looking like this. That's still not focused. Come on. Can't do it. Um, so that was what it was looking at at first, and then it was a little bit lighter, and then ended up pretty white. Yeah, you know, whatever you need to start out with, and then if you get into it a little bit more, then then it can become the money pit, but nothing says it needs to be like crazy. I, I thought the video quality was fairly good, you know, um, for the streams and the videos I've watched back. So try not to let that stop you. Definitely don't let that stop you. Okay, we've got all those done. What are we doing now? Preload nuts. Oh. So this is one of the kind of I'll say finicky parts of the build where you need to pay attention to stuff. I'm gonna take those H extrusions we moved back over here, the ones that we used for aligning the Z frame, and we want to put those on the back. They have blind holes, so you need to make sure the blind holes face outwards. So that you can actually tighten them down. And I'm going to loosely tighten these. needs to get tightened down some more. Oh, nice, you did purge it out. I was wondering if you would before you print it. Yeah, um, the, the purge from black to, to white needed like 300 millimeters of purging. I really don't want to use VHB, so I'm taking a break to print, print mounts. Oh, for the uh, PSU on, on a V0. Challenge with the webcams is editing it together with 4K recorded from your phone. Yeah, that is, um, it's a challenge. You can, I mean, you will end up upscaling or downscaling one of them, 
Um, sometimes 1080p upscale can look okay. I upscale everything when I upload it to YouTube anyway, even if I have 1080p footage, I always upscale it to 4K just because the increased bit rate that you get. There's a lot of little secrets about uploading to YouTube to get better quality, um, kind of like streaming. So my, my canvas in OBS right now is 1080p, uh, but I'm upscaling it to 1440p right now to get a higher um, bit rate. Well into work. Have a nice evening. Oh, thanks for hopping in. Um, I'll talk to you in discords, I'm sure. PSU and CPUs on the V0.2, yeah. Okay, so we've got our H extrusions in there. We've gotten them tightened down a little bit. We need to measure out 37 millimeters for the back spacing. This part, I remember being pretty finicky. We do have these guys printed out. So these are from Vector 3D and you can use them to kind of easily get the spacing. And they're pretty close right now, to be honest. I'm not sure everything is like quite square, but. That's at 37.1, depending on how hard I press on the calipers. Thirty-six point nine. That's right about thirty-seven. I could maybe like loosen it a tiny scotch. Retighten it, but not sure how worth it it's gonna be. 37 on the dot. This one's pretty close as well. I'll just go ahead and tighten it and re-tighten it. Untighten it, tighten it. loosen it and tighten it. Words. I actually pinched my skin a little bit there. And these bits really like to get stuck in there. We need to do the same on the bottom. I think that this makes it a lot easier to kind of get these fairly square consistently using this rather than trying to use a ruler or a pair of calipers or something like that. So again, shout out to Vector3D for coming up with this jig. Does make probably more sense for me knowing that I, I was gonna be building two different V0s to have these printed parts, but now if we go back and measure all these 37.1, don't want to go back and fix that guy. Just about 37 on the dot. Pretty much 37 on the dot. I guess I could have done that so it was in view of the camera. For you guys' sake. Yeah, depending on how nicely I align things. So uh, I am a little worried about these not being perfectly parallel, but they should be pretty close considering these are pretty nice and square. So this should end up being pretty square as well. 
Okay, ours looks a lot like that. We need to get our chain mount, the other side of our chain mount. That's not it. Oh, Alex, what'd you say? After I finish my V0.2 build, I'm going to try to get improvements to the manual. They need more, they need to merge the Karagami and Picobilical docks. Yeah, I guess the problem there is that the LDO kit isn't spec, right? So if somebody is self-sourcing, excuse me, somebody self-sourcing and or doing a different kit, then they don't want to have to explain a whole ton of differences, but they can, I think, integrate to those docs and link to those documents better. Even the LDO documents, they're a little like disjointed feeling to me. So I think that could be better a little bit. Where is this chain mount? Oh, it's this guy. I need to take it off. So it comes actually on there already. And you gotta remove it. You know what I mean by that, Alex? Like, you building the LDO kit, you want to know about like the Pico Bilical and all that kind of stuff, but they expect, um, who is it, LDO to kind of explain all their documentation themselves, which means you have to hop back and forth between two or three different types of documentation, which is frustrating. Uh, these need to be M3 by eights, which we already have out. No, those are sixes. You don't have the M3 by eights out. Bro, it's getting a little scratchy, guys. And then we're gonna take our hex nuts. I can get any out of the freaking thing. Those preloaded on. Just slide him facing down. Oh, come on. The nuts aren't like aligned the right way, so they don't want to go in. Killing me, Smalls. There we go. This might be another spot where we need a ball end in order to get in the right angle for this guy. Guess the nut needs to be near flush. Even my ball ends kind of like to get stuck inside of these screw heads. Yeah, I understand the manual should be a self-contained product. Yeah, it's kind of a, again, gift and curse with the LDO docks and kits and stuff. The kits have made it so much easier to get an affordable set of components, but then like they differ um, they're trying to make their products more attractive, so they start to kind of include their own little mods, and it can kind of get a little out of hand. So we need our bottom deck. Here are our panels. Hard time grabbing stuff. So the bottom deck is in our V0 upgrade kit. Um, there's one that came with the original kit uh, for the V0.1, but it has changed for the V0.2 
and B0.2R1. So I'm just trying to get it out of the box without dropping everything else out. And then we get the pleasure of removing the cursed brown paper. Um, so there does seem to be some technique to this. Now this is the wrong panel. This is the bottom bottom panel. I need the bottom deck. Here we go. Might be getting a little tired, guys. Got like two more pieces of the frame, I think, and then squaring. And then we might have to call it. I'm trying to get it started with my fingernails. Maybe I should have done it on a corner that doesn't have a, a compound corner to it. And once you get it started, if you kind of just peel it back the right way, it won't rip itself. But it's so finicky. Some people say to peel straight up and it kind of helps it not. <laughs> having flashbacks so yeah if you peel straight up it tends to do better than if you try to peel this way I feel I don't know I saw somebody maybe it was Nero or Steve that mentioned the technique for getting this to peel that wasn't too too bad to be honest I didn't have to restart it 75 times You can't do it too fast, you can't do it too slow. I think peeling up is the move. Pulling straight up on it, something about it. The tensile strength of the paper or something. Sciency. Pull straight up. Uh, these panels are a nice texture. I don't know if these are acrylic or what, but can you guys see the sheen they have versus just like a straight up glossy mess? I am getting some fingerprints on them I'm gonna have to clean up later, but uh, compared to the, the black panels in the Formbot kit, they're surprisingly nice quality. So the notch needs to be on the right when you slide it in. I do kind of want to do something special with um, The bottom panel, like some kind of a designy type thing. And then stick this guy out through there. I'm not sure what, maybe some vinyl stickers or printed kind of design on the back, but something. So again, the this being on here already just kind of makes it really finicky and annoying to try to square the frame when it's kind of just sticking sticking out of the end like this. You gotta find a way to like tuck it in so it won't protrude too much. But I guess it needs to be on there right now because there's no other time we're gonna be able to get it on. How is someone meant to self-source the panels? The kit comes with the panels custom cut for this project. How are you meant to get them cut yourself? Um, any uh, plastic supply company um, can do CNC and or uh, laser cutting. So there's a guy, um, uh, the guy who actually designed the V0.2, I believe. He has a, a business that's like Minnesota cutting. Um, I'll try to find a link to it, but he does uh, Voron panels. A few other companies do Voron panels too. But like Sin Cut Send is a service that you can use that's fairly cheap in the United States that will do um, custom cut acrylic and ACM and other uh, panels. So 
those look really nice, yeah. Yeah, they're not the glossy mess that I've seen from others. Uh, that's all the bottom deck. I think we need to put the front extrusions on and then we can square it. No, we need to preload nuts. Always preload nuts. Try to get this in the same orientation. Get this screwdriver out of here. We need three on the outside bottom. So that is something I've noticed. Having these washers on there does make it harder to get the preloaded nuts in. Gonna have to scoot them out of the way. Get in your home. One. Count. I have to count from such and such. One. Two. Three. Please go in. Do I have a client for this build? No, I just build these for myself and obsession with having cool stuff around. I just like, um, I've been inspired by guys like Steve Builds and Mandic really. You have some like cool upgrades and color schemes to their printers. Four on the bottom. I think we're just gonna remove this guy temporarily. It probably wouldn't be a problem if we didn't have to worry about the washers. Uh, there's a lot of cool mods you can do to the V0.2 if you're kind of just looking for something cool to do. Um, I've done some some mods to my Formbot kit. You can look up in the video series and also on the GitHub. Um, 3D Print SOS Fetter, he did the Fisec kit and he's done some cool mods. Like uh, he put the auxiliary fan on so he can print a, uh, excuse me, PLA. It's like a curtain fan that sits on the side. Yeah, just taking that screw out makes it so it's much easier to get in with the washer. We're just gonna do that from now on. There's three, four, and four. Uh, I really want to do a non-Cartesian build, like Polar, Dual Polar, or Scara. Those are getting uh, into the esoteric territory. Um, no, no, nothing wrong with those, but those are like, you know, some pretty unusual printers. If you want something unique, kind of like not a lot of people at a 3D printer meetup are even going to have Polar or Scara builds. I don't understand the... Um, the kinematics behind them very much. I guess you would learn them doing the build. So I think that's what's prevented me from kind of getting into any of those. Like they're just kind of like mind blowing. I mean, Core XY kind of used to feel like that to me, to be honest, but it just feels so much more approachable after you build a machine. Probably after you just use one too. So I think we have that four four and three. Now we're gonna have to like flip it and turn it. Three on top, three on top, and three on the side. Let's just do this guy, we need three in here. One, three. A uh, great mod if you want to easily be able to print everything. Yeah, the, uh, the auxiliary fan, I'm definitely gonna put one either on this printer or on the form bot. I, I bought the fan, I just didn't take the time to actually do it. It's 
So now we need to put this guy back on. So I guess that is a little bit of a finickiness. So Fido, did you see what I was saying about using a little washer on the head of these blind joints? It makes it so that when you're tightening down the screws um, and tightening the blind joint, the extrusions don't want to like twist against each other. Do you know what I'm talking about? I can't remember if you experienced that, but sometimes the frame gets slightly out of a line when you're tightening things just because they don't want to stay. They're kind of like, I don't know, torquing against each other in a weird way. Top on the, on the outside. Uh, that's a, a tip from Steve, so I can't take credit for it, but. Oh. Right, we have a 100% recovery rate for dropped hardware today. Teddy Puma, thanks for hopping in the stream. Welcome. Uh, you were saying how you like to have cool stuff around you. Non-Cartesian are pretty cool. They are, they are pretty cool. I can't deny that. One on top, two on top. Three on top. those in and then get our so really if you're going to do this method of using the washer I, I'd say you can kind of wait until this preload step to put these on there's not really any reason to have them there besides just kind of I think they just wanted to do them all at the same time in one picture you got three on that side three on the top and then three on this top How's it going, Puma? Are you waking up, going to sleep? What part of the world are you in? You're on the top. Better, I'm not sure if you were here or not, but I actually took one of these rails off just for the sake of making sure that the LDO text was uh, right side up. Because that's super important, right? I'm going to have to see it until we get the, uh, the gantry done. 100% the right move. <laughs> I'm in Michigan, should be asleep, but working on company stuff, gotcha. Welcome to the stream. Okay, we need a B extrusion. Pose up the front of the bottom front of the frame. It's preload four M3 nuts. Where is them B extrusions? The A and B are the same. We got four more of them left. We will have three more of them. Four M3 nuts preloaded into this guy. Uh, these do not have any blind holes in them, so you don't have to worry about orientation on this. I missed the start of this stream to get you that deck plate. I think I would prefer them on the ender wire build, if that's okay. Um, Alex Berg, you were just talking about where you can get decks or panels cut from. Um, Puma might be a good person for you to talk to. bottom facing channel.
all good with you. Cool. I need M3 by 10. I put them away, I guess. Two. I'm just going to call these like Steve. Steve washers. I don't think I've noticed anybody else using them, but I'm definitely feeling like they're helping. Are you interested in building your own CNC drilling cutting machine? I see there's some crossover. A lot of people are um, doing that Milo build. I know Steve probably has one coming. It seems like Nero has one as well. I think 3D Maker Noob is doing one. I'm definitely interested in it. My main thing would be making sure I had a good space for one. So that would have to be out in my garage and I don't have like a good setup for it. But yeah, like CNC is like a really good next step. Looks like we're going to have some more that preloading to do. So we've got four on the bottom of this guy. Lucy Goosey, he's just gonna sit there. And then we're gonna do a last check. So looking at the top, we have two up top right here. We have three and three here. If we flip it over to the opposite side, which is gonna cause us to lose that extrusion and the panel almost. Do we really need to put the panel in before in doing this? I think we could have reversed those instructions. We have Oh, sorry. It's not the right direction also. Jeez. We have four here, four here, four here, and two here. That was from like way, way back. And our bed is still falling under its own power, so uh, hopefully that means our z-axis is still pretty square. So that's all the preloaded nuts there. And then we have three on the bottom left and three on the bottom right. I think that's correct. Then on the front middle, we have two, or sorry, the front of the bottom, we have two there. On the back, we have one up there, three vertical, three vertical, and then two in the very bottom. I think we're good. What do you guys think? Are we pretty good? We can put this extrusion back where he belongs. Off the Raven. Okay, so do we want to do Nevermore? I'm a little worried about my frame screws coming loose due to vibrations from printer motion. Uh, I haven't had too many issues with them. I didn't use Loctite on my frame whatsoever. Um, some people do. But I, I haven't really noticed it. I mean, it might be a little hard to tell. Um, if we want to do Nevermore, we can preload a couple screws now. I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to do like two on each side. So we'll have like two for Nevermore if we need it. Or any other type of... Um, air filter and then if we want to put an auxiliary fan in we can do that as well
I did Nevermore on one side and 120 millimeter fan on the other, but I also found some clip-in mounts that work really well. Gotcha. Yeah, those clip-in mounts were surprisingly secure. And they snap in so you don't have to worry about any hardware. I saw a guy that used like a magnetic mount for his Nevermore and the magnets are actually the contacts for the fan. That was kind of cool. So it was a somewhat wireless solution. Oh boy, I almost scratched that up real bad. Actually, there is a little bit of scratch from that. Shucks. All right, now we're gonna get our D extrusions and just about close up the frame. There are only two D extrusions. I don't think we've used any yet. We do need to pay attention to the blind holes. They have one this way, and then up top they have two. I think it's up top they need to have the two. No, the bottom they need to have the two, up top they need to have the one. So they slide on this way. I think these heads are too close. Getting to the final stretch of the frame, guys. Puma, do you have a website or anything? this guy to uh, slide on to the washer. Oh, I need to redo that because I did not get the washer to slide into the channel up top here. does not want to slide on to that screw for some reason. I'm not sure if the screw threading is weird or if this extrusion is a little weird. There we go. I don't know why this extrusion is like particularly tight, but it is. Uh, and the aux fan has a clamp on the bottom as well. Yeah, that was a lot of printed parts. That was my only kind of thing I didn't like about the, um, the aux fan that I saw. I do, but it's very much incomplete. I have one more machine to finish building, a lot of product photos to take. I've been working on my Nevermore V4 for my V0 with the clip-in mounts. As of watching the stream, nice. Which, um, I don't know if you've already mentioned it and I forgot, but which version of the V0 do you have and what kit was it? What kit manufacturer?
So with these um, Steve washers, it is a little challenging to get all of these to align well while you're trying to feed them in. Just because the washers add a little bit more. Well, I say that and then that one goes on like easy as heck. The extrusions, um, they want us to tighten them up. I'm going to kind of hand tie them a little bit, tighten them. I only have the lid for the cartridge left to print. Sending it now. All of uh, it was printed on the V0 except the charcoal cartridge. Gotcha. I think I printed almost everything on the V0 for the. No, maybe I printed some things on my um, my Prusa. And I did the V6. What is it called? V6 something version of it. V6 Micro. I think it's the variation of Nevermore I used. Fetter, you might have used the same version as him. Did you do the V4? Uh, Cyborg V0.2 R1 was Kirigami, Belted Z, Dragon Burner, and Shark Finisher. Okay. Are you um, a fan of Zombie Hedgehog by chance? Sounds like something he would build with the, uh, the Dragon Burner and Shark Fin. is the single 50-15, gotcha. Yeah, I had a, the dual 50-15. I'm not sure why. I thought it might, you know, perform a little bit better, but I haven't seen anybody like quantify that at all. 3D Experiments, hey, thanks for dropping in. Um, feel free to kind of watch this if you're not able to uh, later. Go ahead and like the video, guys. I need to do my YouTube, YouTuber stuff. See, I have like a graphic for that. Overhead. Like the video, follow me on all my social, please. So these are mostly all tight and I can tell that this one is not quite square. The bottom feels very square at the top. I'm trying to do my best Steve impression and just kind of feel stuff out. Steve is like the extrusion whisperer. He just talks softly. The extrusions and they just fall into line. Oh, come on. He, on the other hand, I have to cuss at him. I'm out, please. That's not feeling bad at all. There is a tiny, tiny bit of rock. Like, I don't think you guys are going to be able to see it, but I can just barely feel it. I don't know if it's going to be worth it to really spend a whole lot of time trying to get that out. 
it's like, I don't know, like 0.2 of a millimeter, it feels like. A moment for mind mindfulness. Is that it? Are we done with the frame? Uh, why are you interested in the belt of Z? Are you talking to Jack? I just think it's an interesting mod. I watch him and Steve builds an arrow and mod bot. Yeah. I did the VZ4 easy print cartridge from um, printables with snap and mounts. Steve builds is my hero. He has OCD just like you and me. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, for Jack. Okay. Yeah, Jack, why are you, um, do you just like the speed of the belted Z? The homing speed, is that faster? Um, is it more precise? What's the attractiveness of the belted Z? Uh, can you guys see any rocking whatsoever? I can just kind of on this side, feel the slightest, tiniest, incy bit like it doesn't make a sound. I can just feel it move almost imperceivably. That does have a little bit of rock. On its side. That doesn't. Oh, it does this way. Belt to Z is my favorite mod ever on any of my printers. It uses pulleys and it's so quiet and precise. Also fast. Gotcha. I don't know. Do you guys square your frames on the side very much? This extrusion is actually a tiny, tiny bit loose. A one, two, three block. And this guy. Actually, let's just use one, two, one, two, three blocks so we don't interfere with block and move the rail. sitting on top of anything. That's something I think I messed up the last time. I was trying to square things up while it was sitting. Went like a washer. So there I can see a tiny bit of actual rock. This way, there's no rock whatsoever. It could be this edge right here, these edges. my last two frames on stair granite slabs with one two three blocks and clamps to keep it square i left that job though so no longer i've access to the, uh, the granite not gotcha i know adam savage he has um some like special equipment that's made for measuring very very precisely and he has a, a surface that's ground down like Extremely crazily precise.
Oh, come on. Uh, can you guys see that? What would that be from? I think I just need to go around the corners and just ever so slightly. Uh, the bed moves up and down so nice and smooth, even by hand if you want to move it out of the way. I've never, it never moves on its own though, so only when it's supposed to, gotcha. How much time do you guys spend getting absolutely crazy? Like I think everything on this is square to like 0.2 millimeters right now. The only thing that worries me is just this tiny bit of rock. Just maybe a, a half a millimeter. I'm not really sure what it's coming from. This way, just this way. Get it. I may not be the best person to ask. I spent three hours squaring my new uh, frame, CNC frame, to Friday. I mean, it can get to a point of diminishing the returns. It's somewhat of a point of pride, I think, for people. Perfectionism, obsessive compulsiveness. Getting to the point where you're using your fingernail to kind of feel out. Microns of uh, unsquaredness. The worst part is when you make one change and it ends up like making another one worse. No. Oh. that way. Sometimes I feel the screwdriver rocking and it scares me. But that's probably perceivable to you guys.
Uh, I'm gonna build the kit as is better, kind of the same way with the form bot, and then I'll kind of pour on the mods once I get some good printing impressions and a little bit of tuning done. That's the plan anyway. I mean, bronze are an interesting thing because I feel like not very many people actually build their kit um, stock. Most people have one to two mods on it, like immediately, at least. Some people have like dozens. But it just feels like for a review kind of purpose. Being close to stock is, I don't know. Just in my head, but it seems right. Nobody said to me, hey, if you're going to review this, you should definitely keep it stock. You know? A lot of mods come with, uh, or a lot of kits come with mods straight out of the box. Yeah, Kirigami, bed frame, the LDO kit has a lot of mods. I've changed out like 10 things already. I don't even have a kit yet. True, I did have regrets on my Trident stock, but after all the little mods, it's like so much better. Yeah. I think I can spend hours getting this more square. But it's just like the ever so slightly like millimeters of, well, not even millimeters, like microns of squareness we're talking about. I could spend some time off stream doing it. I don't think it's all that beneficial to kind of, um, spend a whole bunch of time having you guys watch me unscrew and rescrew the same eight screws but um yeah that's the end of the frame and that's what i wanted to get to today so i think in terms of the build we can go ahead and call it um the next stream will be starting to do some of the actual like kinematic stuff which is kind of cool um, the AV motors, gonna get some bearing stacks built. That is where I will kind of probably ping you guys a little bit more for your opinions on color combination. Where are all those parts? So I have, again, multiple colors. a lot of these parts we've got the um dark galaxy gray from polymaker we've got the green so here you can see like one color combination the green and then the black with the gold doesn't have to be gold we can do also the galaxy black looks like green in the middle I know there's so much black in the frame, I'm a little hesitant to use the galaxy black in too many places because it just doesn't kind of stand out. The, the accent will, but. Oh, what have you guys been talking about? You guys have been chatting away. Uh, centralist and Canvas, yeah. If I build anything that's gonna have a full-blown stealth burner like my Enderwire, I'm probably gonna go CAN bus right from the beginning. I did boop on my Micron. Thinking about doing it. My Micron is booped as well. Sounds like boop is the way to go. You guys source it uh, or buy a kit for the boop. Micron is your favorite printer. I need to build a Micron, it sounds like. Have a good night. Thanks, Pathetic. Um, Puma, I will 
definitely chat with you again about um, the panels and um, enjoy the rest of your night. I hope you don't have to do too much more work. It's the LDL partial kit from Fabrico. I also did Can. My Micron is my workhorse printer. Printed a V0L Pandora's box V2 on it so far, not to mention all the countless tricks for the kids. Yeah. Printers printing printers. It's kind of awesome. Um, so there you guys can see the three different color combinations. Maybe you can see what I mean of the Galaxy Black. It has a little bit of sparkle, so it'll stand off, but I'm hesitant to make any large parts of the printer black. Um, so it's a little bit more between the light gray and the green. I'm leaning towards green for the larger parts and then maybe the black for that. I'm not sure. I've got almost every permutation kind of printed out. I just want it to look, I don't know, cool, but I want it to kind of fit with the theme of Halo and Master Chief. So I'm leaning towards green for the, uh, the bigger parts. And then just where there's too much green, maybe kind of popping in a little bit of black or gray. And then the, the gold is very sparse. Like you guys see, I don't have very much gold at all because um, it's not really in there. The green is great. This is all Polymaker. So this is the, um, the Army Green ASA. So at first I picked up some of their green green and it just was like a little bit too frog green or forest green like it just looks green and this has just like a little bit more olive drab quality to it you know hence being army green so that was the goal there Then we've got the visor to kind of pick up on, or the gold. Was meant to kind of pick up on Master Chief's visor. So the print head having a little bit of gold on it, I thought was cool. And here's kind of what all the colors look like combined. So just like mostly green, and then where there's a lot of green, maybe break it up with some of the black and then a little bit of gray for visual interest. And then, I don't know, it's some more gold. I'm playing around with things. I love it even more now. Yeah, that's the plan, was to go full on Halo kind of theme. And then, we've got these, which are designed by uh, Mandic really, but I've customized. So this one was printed on a PEO sheet. So it's got like a little bit of a carbon fiber pattern to it. It's very glossy and kind of reflective. And then there's some kind of, you can kind of see where it turns around with the print sometimes. And so you can kind of see some like strange lines in it. So you can actually see it on this one even kind of better when the light hits it in certain directions, you can see where it kind of I don't know, started and stopped. And maybe it started and stopped in a different direction or something. It's very interesting. I wish I did those colors. I guess I'll have to use my Voron to make another Voron. That, this is the way. So I'm, I'm gonna have to decide once we get to the back panel, if I wanna use one of these and which ones I wanna use. So you can see it's got the LDO logo right there. It's got my ballistic tech logo. Um, over here, it's got the Voron logo, my logo again, because why not? Then it's got 117 UNSC and the Xbox logo. So same thing on this one. I was tempted to do this whole thing in the green and then have the black or gold be the accent, but I. I kind of like how subdued this is. I'm not sure. Again, I'm not the best with the colors and all that kind of stuff. I'm just trying to learn by playing with stuff and see what works best. 
But yeah, I think that is probably a pretty good place to go ahead and call the stream. Um, we got a fair amount done. The whole frame built in essentially one day. This whole part took me like two and a half streams, I feel like. And then I also redid things a couple times when I did the Formbot kit. So definitely going faster. Um, enjoying the process. Uh, the LDO kit, the extrusions have been uh, pretty pretty good, I find. Um, I'm liking the the quality of the components. The Kirigami bed frame has been really, really good in comparison to um, the Formbot kit. Everything fit on there and the bed just moves really, really nicely without very much kind of tweaking on my part, which is a, a far cry from what I experienced on the Formbot kit. So yeah, so far, really, really happy with the kit. Happy that you guys have been hopping in the stream with me. Uh, really enjoy being able to chat with you guys while I move through this. So I'm essentially not building it alone. So um, I will continue to try to give you guys a couple hours notice before I stream. I'm unfortunately not able to kind of um, kind of plan things out weeks ahead and I can't do a consistent schedule like Steve and Nero and some other guys are, but I'll try to give, you know, as much time ahead, of, uh, much notice ahead of time always feel free to check out the, the stream bods and leave comments there as well i'll go back and look at the comments uh, follow me on all the social medias hit me up on any discords where uh, we're common members on i'm on the the voron discord i'm on fetters discord 3d print sos uh steve builds i'm on narrows and mod bots and all that kind of stuff so um yeah dude i've been doing colors for 20 years you're doing good <laughs> Good, I appreciate the um, the cosign on that. We trying, we out here trying. Appreciate the stream, good night all. Have a good one, Martin. Uh, thanks for hopping in the stream. Thanks to everybody who hopped in the stream. Um, yeah, I, I will give you guys a couple hours notice. I'm gonna play around with some of the color combos just so I have an idea of what I want. And then I might get your guys' opinion once I actually start to do the builds. But uh, yeah, I guess I will see you guys in the next stream and or on the internet. Peace.